Welcome to the regular board meeting of the Halton Catholic District School Board on Tuesday, May the 4th, 2021. Please note that this meeting is being live streamed and will be posted on the board's YouTube channel. Trustees be reminded to turn off your microphone and camera on your devices until you're recognized to speak. Please only use the chat box to, box to type hand up. Once you've been recognized, please turn on your microphone and camera. We have guests on the line, of which some will be presenting a delegation uh, to us this evening. We'll go to our opening prayer. Student uh, Trustee Gubert, would you please lead us in the opening prayer, the National Anthem and the Oath of Citizenship. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and through you. Please join me in the sign of our faith, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, as we go into this meeting, we place ourselves before you. For you are filled with the beauty and light and care deeply about us. Help us to value and appreciate those we gather with. May your light enfold us. May your spirit guide us. May your grace abound in us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise for our national anthem and oath of citizenship. There were no motions adopted in camera. Uh, Vice Chair Duar, please read the information received in camera. The following information was received in camera. Robert Viturajak, Andrew Burke, Irina Klippa, Guy Kolas, Juliana Cruel, Francesca Yani, and Timothy McCarthy appointed as department heads effective September 1st, 2021 for a period of up to four years. Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Duart. Approval of the agenda. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to the agenda? Trustee O'Brien. Thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, item 8.6, multi-year strategic plan. In that item, we are voting on four changes to the plan. Uh, the vision statement, mission statement, and two in the value statement. So I was wondering if we could vote on it as four separate items. So I'm moving that the one item, 8.6, be actually f um, dealt with in four different um, votes. I move that. You, yeah, you don't, I don't think you need to move it and we can get uh, Mr. Kapoor's uh, input. So I think the, um, 
Uh, the gauge is whether the items can stand independently, which I believe they can. Uh, each each is its own statement, so we would be able to to vote on those separately. Uh, I don't believe it needs a seconder, and and once we get to those to that item, we can um, we can view the wording of the um, of the statements. Uh, can you confirm that, uh, Parliamentarian Kapoor? Uh, yes, Chair. Under Bylaw 10.11, you are absolutely correct. It, if they contain two or more distinct propositions, uh, any member can ask that they be voted, uh, considered and voted separately. And it doesn't require a seconder, is that correct? You're right, that's correct. Yes, okay, thank I, you. So, point of clarification, I do that at the time the item comes, correct? So you've uh, you've made that uh, we can we can again get confirmation from uh, Parliamentarian Kapoor because we've never dealt with this as a board. But you have made that request. So uh, in in my opinion, it would be in effect now, and I am aware that we need to separate and uh, and deal with those separately. Is that correct, uh, Parliamentarian Kapoor? Right, yeah, Chair, that's correct. You've uh, you've heard it and you've made note of it, and when the time comes, you can apply it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Guzzo, give your hand up. I do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to uh, ask that the agenda be um, moved around and that we look at, um, we move items 10, the information items, uh, prior to the action items, as there are several things there that we have not been able to get to uh, for several months now. Uh, in particular, the school update um, and the student trustees update. Um, their time as trustees are, are, are slowly coming to an end, and it just would be a shame that we haven't heard from them at all. So I would ask that uh, we move the agenda around to allow for that to happen first. Uh, so if, if we don't have consensus to do that, we would have to take it to a vote, and I believe we need two-thirds. Is that correct, uh, Mr. Kapoor? If it's, uh, if you could remind me where uh, the intent, the proposal is to move item 10 to where? Before items eight. It's not a new item or uh, moving, uh, it's not a new item. I, I believe, uh, I believe a majority may be adequate here, sir. Okay. Do we, is there any opposed to moving Item 10 before the action item. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to. Uh, Mr. Chair, there's majority is required. Sorry, point of order. Uh, moving, yes. Uh, re rearranging the agenda as Trustee Guzzo is suggesting requires two thirds majority, regardless of which item is being put forward. Uh, let me, if you don't mind, I'll review our um, uh, bylaws. One moment, please. Uh, Trustee Demasi, I was looking at our bylaws 9.1 variation and um, variations in the order of business um, shall be permitted with consent of the majority of trustees. So that's how I view it. Uh, Mr. Kapoor, do you view it any differently? Sorry about the delay, Chair. Um, that That does apply to uh, other parts of the uh, of the agenda. I believe it. Uh, I believe it can be generalized to this meeting as well. I so I that is where that has been where I've been getting my uh, my gave you that advice from. Okay, thank you. So uh, I'll rule that a, a simple majority is required if we don't have consent. 
Do, first of all, do we have consent? To move no, the item? Mr. Chair. Okay, so I'll take it to a vote. Order, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, Trustee Grosso. Uh, my point of order is that uh, I would uh, I would suggest that the priority on the agenda is the action items uh, rather than information items, and uh, I'm opposed to changing to changing the order of the agenda on that basis. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Point that's uh, that story that told Trustee O'Brien. Let me rule on the point of order. So that uh, with respect, Trustee Drosa, that's an opinion, not a point of order. So we don't have to to rule on that. Did you have a point of privilege, Trustee O'Brien? No point of order. This has not been seconded yet. Uh, I don't know, um, Parliamentary Report. Do we need a seconder to to vote on this variation? Uh, I would say as a motion to amend, yes, Chair. Okay, thank you. Good point. Then, uh, Trustee O'Brien, thank you. I will second you. it. Okay. So we have. Uh, the motion to rearrange item 10 to move item 10 ahead of action items 8. It was moved by Trustee Guzzo. It was seconded by Trustee O'Brien. I'll call a vote. Trustee DeRosa, how do you vote? I'm opposed, Mr. Chair. Uh, Vice Chair Duart? Abstain. Abstain. Trustee Guzzo? In favor. Trustee Ntomasi? Against. Trustee Carabella? Opposed. Trustee O'Brien? In favor. Trustee O'Hearn Chernata? I'm in favor. Trustee Goober? I'm opposed. Trustee Kelly? In favor. Trustee Roshti? Opposed. Trustee Agnew? In favor. And uh, Trustee Murphy is opposed. So we have a tie. So the motion uh, fails. Uh, up next, Trustee Agnew, do you have your hand? Um, I do, Mr. Chair, and sorry, I just need some clarification on Trustee O'Brien's um, suggestion for later on. So uh, with respect to that action item on the multi-year strategic plan, is does it need a vote? Do Does it just get separated? Like, how are we handling that particular uh, request? So each uh, individual item would get voted on uh, separately. So for example, there would be a motion to approve the mission, a motion to approve the vision, a motion to approve the value, and they're all voted on. So, so I understand. So I understand that part, Mr. Chair. But do we need to vote on Trustee O'Brien's suggestion no, I, to have that done? If some people. May no, not as per our bylaws, that. it's um, it's a request that any trustee can make if if it qualifies and there is two distinct. Uh, matter so and, and the um, the yardstick or the gauge is will can either item stand on its own without relation to the others okay and that determination has been made we'll make the determination when we get to that action item uh, I made that determination that okay. they are they are unique and can and can stand on their own great thank you very much you're welcome uh, Tresio Hernchernato no, I withdraw. That was previous. You answered my question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Trustee DeRosa. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in regards to item 8.6, um, I'm not exactly sure how we uh, handle this, but I'd like to, to make a point to the effect that uh, the multi-year strategic plan um, has not completed its process, and if we're if we're voting on it a piecemeal, um, we are voting on it without knowing what the total the total picture is going to be. So I'm so, questioning the timeliness of this item on this agenda, um, and I would like to propose that we remand it to a time when uh, 
the strategic plan, uh, the multi-year strategic plan is in more of a complete, uh, completed form. I know we're here to consider just the, the mission statement, but the mission statement is is a precursor to the uh, the whole picture. And okay, we don't so, have what the whole picture is going to look like yet. So okay. I would suggest that we remand, re, uh, scratch off this item off the, the agenda and remand it to a later time. Okay, so you're moving a motion that we delete item 8.6, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, and do we have a seconder for that? I'll second that, Mr. Chair. Seconded by Trustee Antomasi. So we will take that to a recorded vote. And um, uh, Parliamentary Kapoor, can you confirm that to remove an item from the agenda, we would need a two-thirds majority instead of a simple majority? Uh, to add an item would require a, a two-thirds or unanimous consent. I think to, re uh, to remove an item would probably just be a, ma a majority vote. Okay, just so just so everybody's aware before we vote. Um, so, sorry, uh, Mr. Chair, just a point of order. Can we double check that with our bylaws, just so we're sure? If you don't mind, uh, we can. One moment, please. Thank you. Parliamentary Kapoor, I don't see it in our bylaws. Is there something in Robert's rules that speaks to uh, removing an item from the agenda? No, not, Chair, not as uh, such. It's uh, Robert's isn't uh, isn't really a fan of uh, adopting agendas, uh, and so we go to the bylaws on that. Uh, my advice to you was based on the fact that. Uh, treating it as uh, as an amendment to the agenda by uh, striking out an item. Uh, that was the principle that I uh, relied upon to give you the advice. Uh, thank you. So I will accept uh, the advice of Parliamentarian Kapoor and it would be a, a simple majority. Uh, I will call a recorded vote. So again, just to refresh your memories, we are uh, voting on whether to strike item 8.6, the multi-year strategic plan, from the agenda. Uh, Vice Chair Duart, how do you vote? Well, I want to stay, so I oppose, I guess. That's right. Opposed. Uh, Trustee Guzzo? Opposed. Trustee Antomasi? In favor. Trustee Carabella? In favor. Trustee O'Brien? In favor. Trustee O'Hearn Chernotta? Opposed. Trustee Gubert? In favor. Trustee Kelly? Opposed. Trustee Roshti? Abstaining. Trustee Agnew? Opposed. Trustee DeRosa? In favor. And Trustee Murphy is opposed, so the motion fails. Item 8.6 stays on the agenda. Uh, so again, I will ask um, a motion to approve the agenda. Do we have a mover? Trustee Agnew. Uh, moved by Vice Chair Duart, seconded by Trustee Agnew. We'll go to a recorded vote. Trustee Guzzo. In favor. Trustee Antomasi? Against. Trustee Carabella? In favor. Trustee O'Brien? In favor. Trustee O'Hearn Chernata? In favor. Trustee Gubert? In favor. Trustee Kelly? In favor. Trustee Roshti? In favor. Trustee Agnew? In favor. Trustee DeRosa? 
I'm opposed, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Duart and uh, Trustee Murphy is in favor. The agenda carries, agenda passes. Declaration of conflict of interest. Are there any conflicts of interest tonight? Seeing there's none, we'll move on to presentations. There are no presentations. Uh, dele delegations, 5.1 declined delegations. We had a total of 16 delegations, which were declined for this evening. We have one delegation for this evening. Our delegates are on the line. I will let them know when to begin. Uh, this is item 5.2, student trustee exclusivity. The delegation this evening is from Ms. Ahmed and Ms. Valencia. Mr. Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Trustee DeRosa. I'm sorry, I don't know when to raise this point, but I would like to ask a question about the refused delegations, if I may. The refused delegations uh, came before requests. Most of the requests came before the special uh, meeting was called, and most of those related to a resolution that had yet to be voted on. Since the resolution was voted on and adopted, uh, the requests to delegate uh, were no longer uh, pertinent. So will the board ever have the opportunity to get those delegations in writing, uh, copies of those delegations, Mr. Chair? Uh, did we, I thought we included them as correspondence, did we? So all of the delegations that were declined were given the opportunity to be added as correspondence. So did we receive that correspondence, Mr. Chair? Uh, not, not all requested to have it uh, entered as correspondence. Rosie, were, were they entered as correspondence? Not yet. So the ones that requested to be entered as correspondence were? Uh, Mr. Chair, point of order. Um, if the information is, is submitted as part of the delegation, that information belongs to the boards. It should be shared as information, regardless of whether or not they've asked for it to be submitted as, as information. Um, simply because a delegation is an asking of delegating to the board. So if you deny that delegation, that information should be transferred as part of information on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you for your, uh, for your opinion. Uh, Trustee O'Brien, I see you have your hand up. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. My question was answered. Thank you. Mr. Chair. So, uh, Mr. Chair. Trustee, o Trustee DeRosa, do you have a point of order? Uh, well, if we want to call it a point of order, yes. Um, well, that would be the only valid reason to be interrupting or if you had a point of privilege. Well, no problem. I, I'll, I'll call it a point of order and then I'll leave it to your good judgment, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, I am. I, I think this board has a right to see the delegations in writing, even though they were refused. Uh, it is part of our de decision process, and I request that all those delegations that have been that have been requested and refused be provide the board be provided with uh, with their submissions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. We'll we'll be happy to do that. Uh, we will always provide uh, any and all information that's requested to trustees. So um, we will uh, we will do that. Thank you. I look forward to it, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Guzzo, do you have a point of order? Uh, just a point of clarification, Mr. Chair. Is it is it my understanding that your delegation has to be approved before you actually submit it? Uh, yes. So yeah. Does the board actually have the delegations or just the request to delegate? Uh, in some cases, we may have the full delegation. In most, in most cases, it would be, well, I shouldn't say in most cases. In some cases, it would be simply the request. And in some cases, they followed up their request with correspondence. And we will provide whatever correspondence we have to all the trustees. Trustee DeRosa, do you have a point of order? Point of clarification. A point of clarification, Mr. Chair, and I'm just trying to to make sure that everybody who's requested um, an opportunity to speak to the board uh, actually, uh, regardless of whether they've been 
refused or not, and I'm sure you've had your reasons, but if they've gone through the trouble of making a request and documenting their request and submitting their request, uh, this board needs to, has the right to see that information. And I believe that you've just committed to providing that information. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I look forward to the information. No problem at all. So we are moving on to item 5.2 uh, to our delegation from Ms. Uh, Ahmed and Ms. Valencia. Please be reminded that you have 10 minutes for your presentation and that you must stay to the script that is part of tonight's board agenda package. I ask staff to assist in it, assist me in keeping track of time. At the end of the delegation, there will be an opportunity for trustees to ask questions for clarification purposes. Welcome and please begin your, your presentation. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kayleen Valencia, and I'm a Catholic student at St. Francis Xavier Catholic Secondary School. This year, grade 11 students such as myself in Catholic secondary schools are required to take world religions. And one of the assignments was to explain why it is important for a Roman Catholic school to teach world religions and the ethical values that go with it. I then wrote about what I learned in the course, which is part of our school board's curriculum the importance of interreligious inter dialogue in all settings, religious tolerance, and complying to the foreground rules of living together. I would like to highlight today, I would like to highlight today that the Halton Catholic District School Board claims to demonstrate a commitment to these teachings of tolerance, interreligious dialogue, and mutual respect through our curriculum. While this sentiment is noble, I am not convinced that it is entirely accurate. As a Catholic, I was taught that when a foreigner resides among you in your land, do not mistreat them. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 33 to 34. My non-Catholic peers are not foreigners, but they are treated as such when they are not granted the same opportunities as me and my Catholic peers. Non-Catholic students take the same Catholic religion courses as me, come to the same school assemblies, masses, and strive just as hard to be active in our board communities and are also Catholic ratepayers. So how are we prohibiting them from representing themselves in a community to which they are highly dedicated and active contributors to? The Catholic morals I've been taught do not correspond with policy 126 and claiming that policy 126 is in motion because of Catholic traditions diminishes what our Catholic faith practice is really meant to be. Through the golden rule, which is at the heart of Abrahamic faiths, and Catholic and our Catholic beliefs, I was guided to treat others with the same respect with which I would like to be treated and to provide others with the same opportunity as myself. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. Matthew chapter seven, verse 12. As a Catholic, I am opposed to policy 126 and as a student, I'm saddened by it. We are here today as your allies, not your foe. Let's work together, find solutions and take action. Hi everyone, my name is Isa Ahmed and I am a non-Catholic student at this board, as well as a non-Catholic student senator. I can say with confidence that the difference in the position of a student trustee and a senator is vast. Although both leadership positions are important, the student trustee offers a completely different set of opportunities that non-Catholics should be able to also benefit from and run for. As Kayleen mentioned, Policy 126 doesn't allow students like myself to run for student trustee, regardless of their grades, volunteer hours, and contributions to our school community. The only thing, this sends the message that no matter how hard non-Catholic students work, the only thing that makes us unfit for a leadership position, such as a student trustee, is our faith. Although I understand that when the policy was adopted in 1998, it was created to ensure that the board operates from a Catholic lens and that student trustees have the and that student trustees have the same requirements as adult trustees. Student trustees are described as the essential connection between students and trustees and are the representatives of the student body on a trustee level. However, they do not have the power to bring up a motion or have a binding vote. 
So whether they are Catholic or not does not matter because they are there to represent the student voice and cannot skew the Catholic lens due to their non-binding vote. It's also important to point out that despite not being Catholic, we are still shaped by the board's education system and the ethics that come with it. The Halton Catholic District School Board has stated that we are committed to creating a safe, inclusive, and welcoming learning environment that supports student achievement and well-being in our Catholic schools, stated on the Halton Catholic District School Board website in the Human Rights section, all the while not allowing non-Catholic students to reach their full potential within our community. The Student Senate has made a huge step towards this inclusion last week when they decided to support an issue after a delegate the issue after a delegation and item were brought up in the meeting the senate is an accurate depiction of our student body and what they need and it is evident that our students are in need of this change the board has potential to create change and to ensure all students regardless of their religious beliefs are given equal opportunities to excel thank you Thank you for uh, your presentation. Uh, trustees, are there any uh, questions for clarifications? Uh, Trustee DeRosa, do you have your hand up? I do, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. And thank you to Kayleen and Isa. I hope I'm pronouncing uh, that correctly. Uh, thank you for your, your presentations. And I'm always impressed by, by the courage that's demonstrated by uh, students to come to, to make their appeal to us. Um, help me understand, uh, non-Catholic trustees, uh, do we make available to them all of the, what is it that, that is not uh, accessible to them that would be accessible to, to Catholic trustees, either in terms of uh, grants, uh, in terms of uh, awards, um, of course, that is not accessible. Uh, the, the fact that they're, they don't have a position on, on, uh, on the board as student trustees. What else is not accessible to them um, otherwise, if any? So first of all, they are also awarded an honorarium scholarship of $2,500 and other forms of recognition and support. They are offered a voice that is a completely different opportunity other than a student senator because they are the bridge that connects the student senators and the Halton Catholic District School Board. They want to achieve equality and by doing so they are able to represent the voices of the students very well so, so excuse me trustee de rosa i hate to interrupt but uh, i saw that uh, ms valencia had her hand up and she may want to add context to the answer i'm happy to to hear her out thank you um, I'd also just like to mention, um, as stated on the Halton Catholic Dis District School Board website, student trustees represent all, and I exemplify these exact words, all of the students in a board, and we cannot abstain the opinions of the non-Catholics that attend our schools in this board. And this board and any other Catholic board is capable for improvement and enhancing the promotion of equality and inclusion, like um, Isa mentioned. So, Trustee DeRosa, do you have a follow-up question? Yeah, just a point of clarification. So just so that I understand correctly, there are no awards or no grants that are um, non-Catholic trustees are being excluded from. Is that correct? No, that is not correct because when you are elected to become a student trustee, you are also awarded a uh, scholarship of $2,500, which is which, which is something that non-Catholics are excluded from because they are not able to run for the position at all. It's not an. I understand, but the two thousand five hundred dollars is a consequence of of being able to apply and run for a tr student trustee. Anything prior to that, I would suggest. And again, I'm trying to clarify. Uh, non-Catholic students have the same accessibility to uh, as uh, as Catholic students. So it's only after you've been uh, you've been 
uh, voted to sit on the board that you would be qualifying for a $2,500 grant, correct? Mr. Chair, may I speak to this, please? Uh, uh, Trustee uh, Antomasi, you, you'd have to go in the queue. We have some people uh, ahead of you. I'll put you in after uh, Trustee Ahern Chernata. Um, so Trustee uh, uh, Vice Chair Dior, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have a question and I put it to staff. Uh, question to Superintendent Makaj. Uh, uh, we have a policy on student trustees. Uh, we, it normally comes up for review as part of our cycle. So, Superintendent Bakaj, can you can you just let us know when it's going to come up for review as part of the normal cycle? Uh, Superintendent Bakaj, would you happen to have that information handy? Uh, yes, I do, and through you, Mr. Chair, that policy I-26 will be up for review at our preceding policy committee meeting of June 8th. Uh, Vice Chair Dewart, do you have a follow-up question? So, so, Mr. Chair, since it's going to come up for review, I'd be happy to review it at that point in time and uh, really consider our student uh, inputs and voice at that point in time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Trustee O'Hearn Chernado, you have the floor. Hi, ladies. How are you? Thank you. Well done. Um, I did delegate myself before I was a trustee, and it's not always easy to do. Um, I just have a clarifying question because a word jumped out at me, Ms. Valencia, at your first year delegation. And the word mistreat or mistreatment, would you be able to elaborate a little bit on what you mean by mistreatment in this form of a delegation or or as far as becoming a student trustee? Sorry, I'd just like to clarify um, which part of my yeah, Sorry, sorry, yeah. In one of them, you talked about it was a quote. And I'm just going down. You know, when you're looking for something, you can't find it when it's glaring at you. Um, when a foreigner resides among you in your land, do not mistreat them. So that word mistreat kind of jumped at me from the page. So I just wanted to ask you if you could kind of elaborate with the word mistreat or were you just using it as a quote? Um, yes, I was using it as a quote and um, I kind of put it in there just to uh, um, what's the word? Compare it to sort of inequality is what I was trying to get at with um, mistreatment and inequality because when you are being excluding to someone or a group of people, I consider that as mistreatment as well. Thank you. Well said. Thank you for your answer. Thank you. Trustee O'Hearn, Chernada, did you have a follow-up question? No, I'm good. Thank you very much. Uh, Trustee Intomasi, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, so I just want to bring attention to uh, the statement bursary. Uh, we have to remember that student trustees are treated as trustees, and it's not a burs bursary. It's an honoraria for, perf for performing as elected members of the Senate. We do not, the policy that we have in place, which precludes non-Catholics from participating, comes to us from both the Education Act as well as the Municipal Act. The Municipal Act states very clearly that the requirement of a trustee, and doesn't distinguish, is that he or she be a Catholic 18 years of old, years of age and supports Catholic education. Those are the requirements which we as trustees cannot change, only the uh, province, the Ministry of Education and the municipal uh, guidelines. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Antomasi. Uh, I just want to remind trustees that this uh, is meant to be a time for clarification purposes regarding the content uh, of the presentation. Up next, we have Trustee Agnew. Uh, thank you, and through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you to both for delegating this evening. As Trustee O'Hearns Renata said, um, it's not always easy to come before um, the Board of Trustees to delegate, especially when you're um, extremely passionate about something, it can be difficult, but thank you both uh, for your delegation. I just have a clarifying question. 
um, that I'm wondering if you could um, help me with. So essentially, I mean, I understand that the issue at hand is um, having the accessibility availability for our non-Catholic students to um, become, to have eligibility to become um, a student trustee. But is it, your, is it that you're looking for um, just the opportunity to have that opportunity, if you will, to just be able to um, run? And if you are um, the selected um, candidate that, you know, you earn your spot and you become a student trustee, or are you looking for an automatic change in the policy that allows uh, that, you know, would, would designate, let's say, you know, one out of the three student trustees be non-Catholic? Or are you just simply looking for the opportunity to be eligible to run for a position? And if you win it, then, you know, so be it. I'm just trying to clarify that a little bit, if you wouldn't mind. Um, yes, I can answer that. So we aren't asking for a held seat as a, a student trustee for non-Catholics. We are kindly asking for the eligibility for non-Catholics to run alongside my Catholic peers and I. So not an automatic um, permanent held, held seat, but the eligibility for non-Catholics to run alongside me and my Catholic peers. Trustee Agnew, do you have a follow up question? Um, no, thank you very much. That's what I thought. I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Trustee DeRosa, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, it's an interesting concept I've just heard. I would uh, I would submit that we would be, no matter what the decision would be on this issue, we would be doing uh, uh, non-Catholic uh, trustees a disfavor if we somehow tried to separate the policy versus their will to run or their ability to run. So I'm going to suggest that that if uh, the board, if it's the board's will to allow, allow trustees What's to your run, point of order, trustee trustees, is that we give them the right, the trustee, full right. Trust, trustee DeRosa, Thank we you, have Mr. a point Chair. of order. Uh, yes. Trustee Guzzo, what's your point of order? Mr. Chair, these are our students and we have rules in place that we, we need to ask questions, clarifying questions. This seems to be turning into a debate and I don't think that that's fair to our delegators. Uh, understood. So uh, if, do we have any other clarifying questions? Mr. Uh, Chair. Uh, Mr. Uh, Trustee DeRosa, do you have a question? We don't want to enter into debate. No, oh, I'm, I'm, I will make sure that we don't enter into, into debates, even though uh, my points are always characterized as debates. I would, uh, I would ask uh, the, um, the student trustees, um, to uh, continue their um, excellent presentation and um, the board will have to consider what's your thought. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, seeing that there are no further questions, I would like to, to thank our presenters. It's always uh, a delight and so important for us to hear uh, the student voice and lived experience. So. Uh, thank you for coming in. There will be a response to the delegation, uh, which will be held, uh, which will be dealt with under agenda item 8.1. We'll move on to item six, approval of the minutes. Um, we're looking at the minutes of April 6, 2021, regular board meeting. Are there any errors, additions, or deletions to those minutes? Seeing that there are none, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of April 6, 2021, regular board meeting? Trustee Agnew. Moved by Trustee Agnew, seconded by? Trustee O'Brien. Trustee O'Brien, we'll go to a recorded vote. Trustee Intimasi. Trustee Intimasi. We'll come back to Trustee Antofasi. Trustee Carabella? In favor. Trustee O'Brien? In favor. Trustee O'Hearn Chernata? In favor. Trustee Gubert? In favor. Trustee Kelly? Trustee Kelly? 
We'll come back to Trustee Kelly. Trustee Roshti? In favor. Trustee Agnew? In favor. Trustee DeRosa? I'm opposed. Trustee uh, Vice Chair Duar? In favor. Trustee Guzzo? In favor. Trustee Antomasi? Trustee Antomasi? Can we see if we have uh, Trustee Antomasi uh, in the uh, participation list? Trustee Antomasi? Uh, it won't impact the vote. Uh, majority carries uh, already. So the, uh, the minutes are passed. 6.2 minutes of April 2021 20, regular board meeting. Are there any errors, additions, or deletions to the minutes? Seeing that there are none, we'll move to a recorded vote. Trustee Carabella? In favor. Trustee O'Brien? In favor. Trustee O'Hearn In favor. Trustee Goober? In favor. Trustee Kelly? In favor. Trustee Roshti? In favor. Trustee Agnew? In favor. Trustee DeRosa? I'm opposed, Mr. Chair. Vice Chair Duar? In favor. Trustee Guzzo? In favor. Trustee Antomasi? Trustee Antomasi? It's not uh, connected. Trustee Murphy uh, is in favor. Uh, Trustee Antomasi's vote will not impact. Majority carries. Moving on to item 6.3, minutes of April 26, 2021, special board meeting. Are there any errors, additions, or deletions to the minutes? Uh, Trustee Demossi said he has no sound. You can type, uh, oh, you're good? All good? Okay, perfect. Uh, are there any errors, deletions, uh, or additions to the minutes of April 26, 2021 special board meeting? Seeing that there are none, we'll move to a recorded vote. Trustee O'Brien? In favor. Trustee O'Hearn Chernata? In favor. Trustee Goober? In favor. Trustee Kelly? In favor. Trustee Roshti? In favor. Trustee Agnew? In favor. Trustee DeRosa? I'm opposed, Mr. Chair. Vice Chair Duart? In favor. Trustee Guzzo? In favor. Trustee Indomasi? Against, Mr. Chair. Uh, Trustee Carabella? I'm abstaining, so I had technical difficulties, so I'm just um, too much. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, Trustee Murphy's in favor. Motion carries. Moving on to item seven, summary of outstanding items from a previous meeting. There's a chart provided for your information. Uh, action items 8.1, response to delegation. In accordance with our bylaws and policy I06, delegation to the board, we have four options. Trustees may move a motion to receive the delegation as information, defer the matter to a future meeting, request a staff report on this matter to be considered at a future, future meeting, or may make a decision on this matter today. Uh, I will now open the floor to any trustee who may want to put a motion on the floor on how to proceed with the delegation. Mr. Uh, Mr. I see Mr. Vice Mr. Chair Duart's hand is up. Mr. Chair, point of order, I'm so sorry, point of privilege. I meant to ask you something about the business unfinished. It, can I ask a quick question about this? Uh, yes, you can ask a quick question, yes. Uh, there's uh, the last motion we passed on diverse school community. Um, like to know through you, Mr. Chair, to Director Daly, has that motion been acted on yet? Uh, Director Daly, you have the floor. Um, thank you, and through you, Mr. Chair. Um, the motion has been um, posted on the board website. 
Uh, I shared the information with our staff and parents this past week. Um, so um, we've started to plan at the uh, board level. So I would say yes, that motion is being acted upon. Thank you, Director Daly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I have a point of uh, privilege. What's your point of privilege, Trustee DeRosa? Um, I noticed that uh, uh, Vice Chair Duarte and uh, hand up and my hand up. Um, we should be playing the lottery tonight because it's 824, 824, both. So it seems like we have the same timing uh, for putting our hand up on the response to delegation. I don't know how you want to resolve that, Mr. Chair. Well, uh, we always take follow the same process. It's sequential. So Vice Chair Duart had his hand up before you because he's ahead of you in the queue. Even though uh, the timing says 8, 824 for both? Well, it doesn't have by seconds, but I'm sure I'm sure if it did. So it is it is sequential. So he did have his hand up before you. Yeah, the only point the only point I'm trying to make, uh, Mr. Chair, is that what I see in terms of time on the time clock, his is 824, mine is 824. And so his, his I leave name it is good judgment, Mr. Chair. Yes. So my my judgment is that my understanding is that it's sequential. His name, his hand was up before yours, even though it has the same minute. Uh, therefore, he has the uh, has the floor. Vice Chair Dewar, you have the floor. Hey, Mr. Chair. Uh, so since we have the policy coming up as part of the review, I move that we, we accept this uh, delegation as information. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Dewar. Do we have a seconder? Carabella. Seconded by Trustee Carabella. We'll go to a recorded vote. Trustee O'Hearn Chernata. I'm in favor. Trustee Goober. In favor. Trustee Kelly. I'm in favor. Trustee Rashti. In favor. Trustee Agnew. Opposed. Trustee DeRosa. I'm in favor. Uh, Vice Chair Duart. In favor. Trustee Guzzo. Opposed. Trustee Antomasi. In favor. Trustee Carabella. In favor. Trustee O'Brien. In favor. Trustee Murphy's in favor. So the motion carries the information, uh, the delegation as, is received as information. Uh, moving on to item 8.2, recommended names for Milton number three, Catholic Secondary School. Superintendent Bakaich, would you like to speak to this? And uh, you, you can read the motion if you like. If not, I can read the motion after you're done. Thank you and through you, Mr. Chair. The purpose of this report this evening is to provide trustees with an update on the process of naming the new Milton number three Catholic secondary school as per our board policy I-15 school name selection. In consultation with the Milton number three school name selection committee, which consisted of Chair Murphy, Vice Chair Duarte, Father James Petrie of St. Benedict Parish, um, parent Mrs. Brenna Yaniro and our parent Mrs. Santos, student trustee Gubert, myself and Principal Wong, four names were submitted for consideration to members of the broader community. Uh, in February, an invitation to submit potential school names was sent to Our Lady of Fatima and Guardian Angels school communities, and the results of the feedback are provided in Appendix A. Further to that, the Milton Number 3 School Name Selection Committee reviewed the names submitted by community members and developed a short list of names in accordance with the diocesan criteria outlined in policy I-15. They considered all the names and rationale provided by community members and created a short list of these four names. And they were Blessed Carla Acutis, St. Josephine Bakita, St. John Bosco, and St. Kateri Tekakwitha. After that, a voluntary anonymous online feedback form was made available 
um, between March 19th and the 29th, and the link to the online forms was sent via email to all parents with children currently attending Guardian Angels School and Our Lady of Fatima School, inviting them to select their top two preferences from the short list of potential school names. The survey was also promoted on the two school websites, as well as through St. Benedict Parish for parishioner input. And the rationale for the name selection and a brief biography of each saint were provided and are provided uh, to you in Appendix B. The feedback received is in Appendix C. And as illustrated in the chart and the table in Appendix C, there were a total of 1,075 votes among the four suggested school names. The name of St. Kateri Tekakwitha had the highest number of um, number first choice votes, followed by St. John Bosco, uh, St. Josephine Bakita, and then Blessed Carlo Acutis. The preference of the community as outlined above is in favor of naming the new Milton Number no. 3 Catholic Secondary School, St. Kateri Tekakwitha. In, in accordance with our policy I-15, trustees are invited to consider uh, the two recommended names for the new Milton Number no. 3 Secondary uh, School and subject to board approval, forward the two names to His Excellency Bishop Douglas Crosby for consideration and response. Would you like to read the, uh, the motion or would you like me to read that? I can. I'm happy to do so. Please go ahead. The recommendation then is um, be it resolved that the Halton Catholic District School Board approve the following two school names ordered in priority as possible names for the new Milton Number no. 3 Catholic Secondary School. First choice being St. Kateri Tekakwitha Catholic Secondary School. Second choice as St. John Bosco Catholic Secondary School. Be it further resolved that the board approved list of possible school names be submitted to Bishop Douglas Crosby for his consideration and response. And I'm happy to take any questions. Let's, uh, we'll get a, a mover and a seconder first, and then we can open the floor to questions. Uh, do we have a mover? Uh, moved by Vice Chair Duart and seconded second. by. Sure. Okay, I was going to jump in as a Milton trustee, but uh, I know how much oh, you go love. Ahead, go ahead. No, no, I know how much you love Milton, so I wouldn't want to take that away from you, no, trustee. No, I will cede my place to you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> I understand. So you're too kind. Problem. Seconded by uh, Trustee Murphy. Thank you. Uh, discussions. We have uh, Vice Chair Duart. You, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just uh, want to reiterate what uh, Superintendent Bakaich said and acknowledge and thank the members of the School Naming Committee of OLF as well as uh, Garden Angels, Father Jim, senior staff, and the EO Chair Murphy uh, Chair for, for working together and coming up with the two names uh, for the Milton Number no. 3 School. We had great participation from students, uh, staff, and parish community in our surveys. And I, I want to thank each and every one for their participation and their contribution. Both the names are great names, St. Kateri and St. John Bosco are both excellent names. And our Milton uh, community would be very pleased to present uh, these names here. And my colleagues and I fully support his names being sent to Bishop Crosby for consideration. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, Trustee DeRosa, you have the floor. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would fully support uh, the, this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Trustee O'Brien, you have the floor. Thank you to you, Mr. Chair, and I want to applaud Superintendent Bakaich and the committee for coming up with this name. It's long overdue. Um, I just have to learn to say it now. Um, but I also want to say I, I'm really glad that you had Blessed Carlo Acutis put in there. Um, hope to see that name again. Um, young man, uh, he has two things that I think worth our young people could look at. One is he's young and he's of our age this time period. So I'm um, glad to see him there. And again, thank you for all the hard work of the committee. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Trustee O'Brien. Up next, we have Trustee Guzzo. Thank you through you, Mr. Chair. I just, uh, I have a question again. I just want to understand the process because it's been a while. So these go off to uh, Bishop Crosby and then they come back if he approves both the names and it, it comes back to the table for uh, final uh, recommendation or final decision? 
Uh, Superintendent McKeitch or Director Daly, did either one of you want to uh, to take that? I messed up the last one. Sure. Oh. <laughs> uh, Super, uh, Superintendent McKeitch? Sure. Um, yes, the, the bishop um, will advise the board if the preferred name is acceptable and in the event that preferred name does not meet diocesan criteria or is for any reason not acceptable to the bishop, uh, the bishop um, is requested to, to advise the board if the alternate name is acceptable. Uh, Trustee Guzzo, did you have a follow-up? Uh, no, thank you. Trustee O'Hearn Chernato? Thank you through you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to say both names are a winner and I would be remiss if I didn't shout out to my alma mater, St. John Bosco. So I just needed to say that out loud, but thank you for all the hard work. Good job. Both names are winners. Uh, did we have any other trustees who'd like to speak? Uh, I would I just like to add my uh, thanks and appreciation to Superintendent Bakaich. Uh, who ran uh, a very tight ship. She didn't let us uh, stray too far. She didn't accept naming every school St. Patrick, one, two, three, but, but that's okay. We came up with some, some really strong names. Committee worked really well together, um, uh, very collaborative, open to, to ideas, so it was really an enjoyable experience. Thank you all so much. Uh, so we will call a vote. Trustee Goober. In favor, Mr. Chair. Trustee Kelly? In favor. Trustee Roshti? In favor. Trustee Agnew? In favor. Trustee DeRosa? In favor. Vice Chair Dewar? In favor. Trustee Guzzo? In favor. Trustee Tomasi? Uh, Mr. Chair, point of clarification. So we're voting on submitting the two names and then we're waiting for Bishop Crosby to provide us with his input, after which it comes back to the board for final deliberation, correct? Correct. In favor. Trustee Carabella? I'm in favor. Trustee O'Brien? In favor. Trustee O'Hearn Chernato? In favor. And Trustee Murphy's in favor. The motion carries. Moving on to item 8.3, uh, 2021-2022 school calendar. Superintendent Donolfo, would you like to speak to this? Uh, and you may read the motion if you like. If not, I can read the motion afterwards. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and through you. Um, this evening, I am presenting the 2021 school year calendar um, to the Board of Trustees. Um, as per the Education Act, each school board is required to submit a school year calendar identifying instructional days, professional activity days, and holidays for each um, school year. The Ministry of Education um, establishes the number of days of the school in the province in accordance with Regulation 304. Each board is to submit a board approved calendar to the Ministry of Education in May. The school year cal calendar committee um, took into consideration uh, three points. One being that professional activity days um, be considered on preferred for Mondays or Fridays, as most employers are um, appear to be more willing to permit parents to have holidays on those days. Um, an essential factor in the establishment of the 2021-22 school year calendar is the integration of transportation services with our coterminous board. Consultation, which complies with ministry direction, has occurred with the Halton District School Board. The Ministry of Education has also asked that we consider to have three provincial priority PA days ahead of the start of classroom instruction for the start of the 2021-22 school year. Some comments. The 2021-22 school year calendar committee is comprised of parent representatives that came from our Catholic Parent Development Committee, OECTA unit presidents, secondary and elementary, QP 3166 and 5200 representatives, the Principals Association's representatives, and one trustee. Thank you, uh, Chair Murphy, for being on the committee with us. The committee met on March 18th for the purpose of drafting the calendar. The 2021 school year calendar, 21-22 um, school year calendar, consists of 187 instructional days, 
with 10 days for the secondary um, panel, with 10 days for um, each, the secondary panel for um, their examination schedule, five per semester as per regulation 304. There are two PA days which will be used for assessment and completion of report card writing in the elementary panel with one additional PA directed for elementary parent teacher interviews. The three mandatory provincial um, PA days that will occur um, are devoted to criteria established by the Ministry of Education. At the time that we've set and even up till right now, the provincial priority focus have not been established. All seven professional activity days align with the Halton District School Board and both boards will have the same secondary school examination schedule. And all the dates are attached in Appendix A. The proposed 2021-22 school year calendar uh, was provided to trustees as a staff report at the April 6, 2021 board meeting. It is now being presented as an action item and once approved, the proposed school year calendar will be forwarded to the Ministry of Education for final approval. I could read, read it. Uh, yes, please do. The following recommendation is being presented for consideration of the board. Be it resolved that the Halton Catholic District School Board approve the 2021-22 school year calendar as presented. Uh, thank you. Can we have a mover? Uh, moved by Vice Chair Duart, seconded by. I'll second it. Seconded by Trustee O'Hearn Chernata. Um, discussions we have in the queue Trustee O'Brien, O'Hearn Chernata, Guzzo, and Intamasi. Trustee O'Brien, you have the floor. Thank you, Sam, Mr. Chair, and thank you, uh, Superintendent Donolfo. Um, a couple questions. One, um, when you plan this, do you plan it with the co chairman of the board so that all the dates are lined up? Yes, yes, we do. So I have had had discussions with our co chairman of the board. So um, the ministry gives us the guideline. So the two of us started the conversation and it was through our conversations that then we presented it to our committee here at Halton Catholic. OK, thank you. That's you answered my question. Thank you. No <coughs> Trustee O'Hearn Chernato, you have the floor. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, to Superintendent Dinal. I have to ask you in the very first statement of the three points for consideration, it said that Mondays and Fridays are preferable to some employers. Uh, where was that statement brought from? What data did you gather? What employees did you talk to? And, and I, um, I, I'll say that that information was shared with me as past practice. So the past practice for both um, Halton District and our board was that that was what the past practice has been, is that the Mondays and Fridays because of uh, parents needing to take those days off. Thank you, Superintendent Dinolfo. Um, follow up, Mr. Chair? Yes, please proceed. Uh, Director Daly, is there anyone that's on the line now that could maybe answer that question? I don't want to put Superintendent Dinolfo on the spot if it's past practice. I'm just curious where that data came from. Uh, Director Daly, you have the floor. Um, thank you, and through you, Mr. Chair. I don't believe there's anybody who could pull data on that. I, I do agree with Superintendent Dinolfo that I think that's probably historical uh, language. Because just a comment in my business, Mondays are our busiest days, so I'm not sure uh, for all businesses, employers out there, Mondays and Fridays are necessarily uh, the best day to give their employees time off. So just a statement and maybe next time we can maybe get some fulsome data. Thank, thank you, uh, Trustee O'Hearn Chernata. Trustee Guzzo, you have the floor. Thank you through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, a couple of questions and it might not be, uh, you might not be the person who can answer it, Superintendent and all full, so it might be a, a, a bit of a, a group effort. Um, in part of it, when you talk about the days assigned for exam time, there's five per semester and I noted that it says per semester, which implies that there's going to be two semesters. Has that been decided? Um, I, I'm trying to understand the school calendar. Are we saying then that September we resume back to um, a normal two semester high school year? Uh, Director Daly, you may want to answer that. Uh, thank you, and for you Mr. Chair. and, and um, uh, I, I can, and if we if we get to my school's update, I can probably talk about it there as well. Um, what we're planning for 
uh, as of today, I guess, um, Trustee Guzzo, is that we would have two semesters, but we would run certainly for semester one on our current quadmester model. At least that's our thinking right now. Semester two, hopefully back to the traditional semestering that we had pre-COVID, um, but right now the indications that we're receiving from the ministry is to uh, plan for a quadmester with the ability to change potentially by September, but probably more likely in second semester. Trustee Guzzo, do you have a follow-up question? I, I, I do, I do. Um, so um, in regards to the start of the school year, and, and I think I, I saw this and I just wanna make sure I understand it. So the three days, the three provincial day, or the three days that the province has asked for you, for, uh, us, for you to, us to put aside, I guess it's us, um, are those, I know they haven't been dedicated. Are those earmarked for the beginning of school so that the first days are non-instructional days? Um, I'm trying to understand that. And if we do end up going online, will we be ready to start the first day of school or will we see something like what happened this year again where um, we're technically slotted to start in September, whatever day it might be, um, and then we actually end up not starting until maybe a day or two later? Um. Uh, go ahead, uh, Director Daly. Yeah, um, thank you, and through you, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll start with the second question first. Uh, I don't anticipate us needing that kind of lead up time uh, that we had this year, uh, really because we've, we've gone through the process once and had to shift to remote a couple of times. So I think we'd be uh, in better shape to start the school year uh, right the, the day after Labor Day, the actual first day of classes. Um, in terms of the uh, the PA days or the, the professional development days, we're having two prior to the beginning of the school year um, and then a uh, board designated holiday where no one's in and then we'll start uh, the day after Labor Day. I, I think I've got that right, um, Superintendent Denolfo. That's correct. That's correct, Director Daly. So it's two PA days on the Wednesday and Thursday and then the Friday is the board designated holiday with the school year starting on the for the children on the Tuesday after Labor Day. The additional provincial PA day is in April. Thank you, uh, Trustee Guzzo. Did you have uh, another question? I do, but I've had two, so there's somebody else after. I'll go back in the queue. Okay, I'll put you back in after uh, Trustee Antomasi. Trustee Antomasi, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Superintendent Denolfo, um, so we have 187 instructional days, and coming up after this particular policy, we will be looking at equity and inclusion. So in equity and inclusion, on page 117, we have significant holy days, which um, we recognize other faiths. I'm wondering, has this been calculated into the 187 days? Because by my calculation, um, if we include the other denominational holidays, that would be one, two, three, four, uh, five, six. That would bring us down to 181 days of instructional, which would not be meeting the requiring requirement of the Minister of Education. Can you speak to that and, and maybe bring some clarification? Thank you. Uh, we have uh, Director Daly. Did you want to speak to that? Or? Um, I, I, th I think I can. And thanks for the question, Trustee Jan Tomasi. So for those additional days uh, that are that are recognized um, in the other policy, those would still still be school instructional days. Um, students of that particular faith would be excused from that school on that day. Uh, if, if they wanted to be in order to celebrate that particular um, that particular holiday or faith day. Trustee and Demasi, do you have a follow-up? I do. Um, so, so again, either to Superintendent um, Danafo or to our secretary, um, how do we make up the seven days that the other um, the other denominations would not if they're not in school how do we, how do we go about making up those days for those students uh director daly did you want to answer that or 
Or I could try, I can answer that as well. Okay, please do. So just as any other day that a student wasn't at school or when regular program is continuing, because we would have regular program on those days, um, the work would be available to the students. If they could do it, they would submit it after the fact, or they would meet with the teacher to get caught up on those days of work that they've missed. So a, some, a plan would be made between teacher and student about the work. It could be done ahead of time. It could be done once the students return to school. So it is common practice for students to be at a school for different events um, in their personal life. And so we always make those accommodations for them. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So uh, Trustee Guzzo, I'm gonna put you after uh, Trustee Carabella and Trustee DeRosa since they haven't uh, asked the question yet. Trustee Carabella, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just had a quick question about last year when we had those pivot days or, or days where um, we didn't have school because we needed it to get organized. How are those day, days recuperated last year and going forward? Do, will those also uh, happen in the coming year? Well, we, we will handle the coming year with what the coming year prevent, presents to us. So we needed those pivot days in order to be organized um, and Right, and so that be it, we were sharing technology with families, or that we, we were pivoting right to that thing. But we always catch up to some degree, so it's still considered one of the instructional days. It's not a designated holiday. It's not a designated PA day. It's part of the program in the circumstances that we were in this year. Hopefully, for next year, we may not have as many if things continue to move forward. And with this calendar, um, we would say like, just like this year, we had, to, we had to modify the calendar. If the ministry gives us direction to modify, then we submit a modified calendar to them. Okay, Trustee thank you. Car Did you have a follow-up question, Trustee Carabella? No, that's fine, thank you. Okay, Trustee DeRosa, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Superintendent Denolfo, from what I understand, and the accommodations for the non-Catholic holidays, if you will, uh, will be treated, excuse me if I oversimplify this, but they will be treated like an, uh, making up a regular absentee uh, absentee uh, day for students who, don't, who doesn't come to school, correct? That's correct. So it, it is a missed day, but marked as a holiday for them in the sense of for their religion. Um, having yep. said that, whatever work that happens in the instructional program that day will be afforded to those students. So I think that's uh, that's a perfectly uh, reasonable thing. What I'm wondering about though is in situations where there's a predominantly high degree or high percentage of uh, non-Catholic students who would be availing themselves of this, this holiday, what is the uh, workload impact or the FTE impact uh, on the teachers? Um, because if we were talking about maybe, you know, a, a, a small number of students, that would be one thing. But in cases where there is a, a, a high degree of students availing themselves of these holidays, uh, I'm wondering what the, the impact on teacher work workload would be. Thank you. With, with any day where we would have a large number of students not in the building, and I could at least say like on a snow day, for example, where we have maybe a lot of students who are not present, um, the teachers either ahead or after that day are going to adjust for what was not maybe covered for those students or what's available. But the teachers are still responsible to be at work that day and to do program for whoever is there. So if, even if we have one student, a teacher is responsible to be there to teach the students who are there and then to provide the program in whatever way it is, if it's to catch them up after the fact, to provide the materials for them, we, that's what we would always do. Thank you. Trustee Guzzo, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, it's gonna go back uh, to the, and I think it was Director Daly who answered this. So if we had to trans transition back into a quadmester, would that impact this calendar kind of like it did last year? Would we be looking at a revised school year calendar that would come forward? Uh, we Director would, Daly? Oh, sorry. We, we would adjust um, Trustee Guzzo the same way we did this year. So then we had a lot more days because we did not have the examination days if that's what the mandate is coming from the Ministry of Education to us. So we will adjust it the same way and then we resubmit that to what the ministry allows us. It's a, it's like software that we submit the calendar to. So we'll adjust the dates accordingly once they give us that direction. 
Okay, but the direction to go to Quadmaster wasn't was a board decision. It wasn't a ministry decision. So that's yeah. why I was asking. Well, that's right. So we, we and I think we're starting to see that direction for the fall. So once we land on which how we're doing it for the fall, then we will adjust um, the calendar accordingly. OK, and when do we think we'll, do we have an idea of when we'll know if that is going to be the case? Uh, Director Daly. Director Thank Daly. you and for you, Mr. Chair. So um, we're planning right now that we'll be in a quadmester for semester one for our secondary students. Um, so um, I, I don't think Trustee Guzzo will get actual firm direction, uh, final direction from the province, probably until the summer. Uh, however, uh, I don't think that will impact the actual start date of the school year. And as such, it shouldn't um, impact on when our secondary school students begin. I think, again, based partially on having the experience uh, last year, um, uh, I, I don't think it should change the beginning of the school year. Uh, thank you. Do we have any other questions, trustees? If not, we'll go to a recorded vote. <coughs> Trustee Kelly, how do you vote? In favor. Trustee Rashti? In favor. Trustee Agnew? In favor. Trustee DeRosa? In favor. Vice Chair Duart? In favor. Trustee Guzzo? In favor. Trustee Intamasi? In favor. Trustee Carabella? In favor. Trustee O'Brien? In favor. Trustee O'Hearn Chernata? In favor. Trustee Goober? In favor. Trustee Murphy's in favor. The motion carries. Moving on to 8.4 Bishop Reading. Catholic Secondary School Renewal Funding. Superintendent Merrick, would you like to speak to the uh, motion? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, and through you. Uh, this report is to request additional renewal funding to complete additional tasks on the Bishop Reading Renewal Project. Um, as trustees will remember, the Bishop Reading Addition Project uh, was approved by the ministry as part of the 2017 Capital Priorities Program. Uh, it is a, it's a massive addition there. It's actually four additions on, on four corners of the building. Uh, and we also had planned renovations uh, and renewal works as part of the project, uh, which were funded back in our 2018 and 2019 uh, renewal project requests to the board, which were approved. Uh, in all, it's about $25 million in construction works uh, on the site, uh, including the uh, about the $20 million uh, addition piece from, funded by the ministry uh, and the rest uh, funded by uh, board renewal works. Uh, we are nearing the finish line on the on the project. Uh, the classroom edition, which contains the majority of the classrooms uh, as part of the edition, uh, opened in September of 2020. Uh, the child care center opened in October of 2020. Uh, the cafeteria edition and the, and the new commercial kitchen uh, opened in February 2021. Uh, and we're just wrapping up right now on the theater renovation, which is the, the former uh, cafeteria, uh, and as well as adding the fourth gymnasium. Uh, and then finally this summer, we'll have some exterior grounds works to complete as well, uh, including landscaping and paving on the outside of the school. So, however, we do have a few additional uh, requirements uh, that are needed to complete the works, uh, and these items were not foreseen at the onset of the project, uh, and therefore uh, we were looking at additional funding needed uh, above the amount that has already been approved. Uh, we have exhausted our contingencies from the past approvals on both the, the new addition uh, and the renewal portions, uh, so that's we're seeking additional funding uh, in the amount of $550,000, uh, and that would go towards the a new electrical service uh, which is now being required by Milton Hydro. Uh, that's about $350,000. Uh, also uh, adding uh, or completing the asphalt works. Uh, we've had to add in a lot of temporary pathways to accommodate students as uh, these renovations have moved around uh, the site. Uh, and we still have to do the top coat asphalt and all the, all the parking lot and all the hardscape areas. Uh, so it's about $75,000 of additional cost there. Uh, and we also have COVID related expenses uh, due to shutdowns and various uh, delays uh, throughout the year, COVID related. Uh, so we have some items there on around rental uh, security and bonding, uh, which are being requested by the uh, the general contractor. So 
Uh, we have one resolution for trusting consideration tonight, uh, which is to authorize the uh, additional expense of $550,000 for the Bishop Reading renewal project, uh, which we believe will take us to the end of the project. It's been a, a long journey getting this done on site, um, but we're nearing the finish line here and hope to secure these funds to, to wrap up the project. So happy to take any questions that trustees may have on the Bishop Reading renewal project. Let's uh, let's read the motion first and we'll get a mover and a seconder. But be it resolved that the Halton Catholic District School Board authorize staff to expense funds from available capital funding and the capital reserved for the proposed addition renewal requirements at Bishop P.F. Reading Catholic Secondary School and that the expenditures will not exceed $550,000. Do we have a mover? Moved by Vice Chair Duart, seconder. I'll second it. Seconded by Trustee O'Hearn Chernata. Uh, discussion. Uh, Trustee DeRosa, do you have the floor? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Superintendent Merrick, I'm just curious what was the original amount and what's the total amount going to be? Uh, Superintendent Merrick, you have the floor. Thanks. So we, we had about $20 million uh, approved as part of the addition project, which was ministry funded. And then we had about $5 million in renewal works on the on the site. So um, this would be on top of that uh, amount. So 25 million plus 550, right? You got it. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Intimasi, you have the floor. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, um, to Superintendent Merrick. Okay, so the construction costs were billed that initially at 20 million. We're now only 550,000 over estimates, or are there other cost overruns um, that that have not been included as yet? Superintendent Merrick, you have the floor. We're expecting the total overrun to be 550,000 dollars. So we expect this to take us to the end of the project, uh, and I hope not to be back here with any further. Uh, uh, further uh, additional funding requests. Uh, follow up, Mr. Good. Chair. Yes. So, so the electrical, um, let me understand this. So what does the electrical consist of? Uh, trustee, uh, sorry, Superintendent Merrick, you have the floor. Through you, Mr. Chair, that would be for a uh, transformer and switchgear upgrade to our electrical service. To accommodate uh, it, it wasn't identified early on as an uh, additional request added by uh, the Milton Hydro uh, Authority. Okay, but so a point of clarification, Mr. Chair, uh, through you. So uh, the local hydro company, Milton, they would put that into part of the agreement when the expansion occurs, simply because. When you're upgrading an electrical, your load is going to have to be calculated at the beginning, which means that if there's any transformers that need to be added or upgraded, that would be part of the agreement with hydro. That shouldn't come afterwards. Was it an oversight by the engineer, the, the electrical engineers? I don't understand how spending 20 million, we can be $550,000 short that's something that's preamble to any um, engineering drawings, especially when it comes to electrical. All these loads are calculated way in the beginning. Superintendent Mayor, you have the floor. Through you, Mr. Chair. It definitely should be calculated on, on and it should be requested through Milton Hydro at the time the uh, permit is put in. Um, they did not catch it then. Uh, they are requesting it now. So uh, with electrical services, typically you have a safety factor. So there is ability to go above and beyond um, the, the typical design load uh, and the, their design to do that. Uh, just now we're, we're into that kind of a buffer uh, as far as the uh, electrical service goes and they're requesting that we upgrade uh, to kind of add that buffer back in uh, and give ourselves a margin of error on the project to, to uh, accommodate that future growth. Uh, point of clarification, can we not now go back, since it's an oversight by, the, uh, by Milton Hydro, can you not go to them and have them do the upgrade without charging us back? Because in past projects, that's what we did. If there were any oversights by the local utility, then you have grounds to say, well, I'm sorry, we don't have that in the budget. You're going to have to pick it up because the transformers, are we putting these transformers on our site or are these transformers on the poles um, on the perimeter of the property? Superintendent Merrick? 
these would be transformers on our site. They're they're much larger than pole transformers, so uh, they would be on yeah, our so site. They're, they're base. They're base transformers. You got it. All right. So uh, can we uh, approach uh, Hydro before we agree to this uh, expenditure? Can we have somebody um, negotiate with Milton Hydro to to see if they can pick up that cost simply because it was their oversight? Uh, Superintendent Mayor. We've tried that already, uh, and we're um, unsuccessful in that. So, um, I mean, I guess if we wanted to pursue litigation, we could. It may end up costing us more in the long run, but uh, that I guess that's an option we could look at, I guess. Can I have another question, Mr. Chair? Uh, so, um, Trustee Antomasi, I'll put you back in the queue because we All have right, two thanks. people ahead of you. So you're, you're in after Trustee DeRosa. Right now, Trustee O'Hearn Chernata has the floor. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, to Superintendent Merrick. Thank you for that. Um, just so I'm understanding, there's a few unforeseen, such as asphalt pathways, the electrical issue that you just discussed, but also I would think some of this would be coming from supplies that our subcontractors and contractors would be using, because I'm sure most of us are aware during this pandemic, costs have skyrocketed. Um, would you say that would be a true statement? Superintendent Merrick, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair, and through you. Uh, there, there definitely was a lot of, uh, you know, either material delays which held up on site or, or increased material costs. Uh, like I mentioned, we do have contingencies built into the project. It's just that we've exhausted those now. So um, we're at the point now where uh, to complete the, the, the full scope that we, you see in the report here tonight, uh, we'll need the additional funds uh, to complete those. Thank you, Superintendent America. I'm empathetic. There's no historical data for a pandemic. So how would you have known? So thank you. Uh, thank you, Trustee Ernst-Ternata. Uh, Trustee DeRosa, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, first of all, I would, just to put things into perspective, I would remark that uh, the additional 550 uh, represents, if my math is correct, probably 2% uh, overage over the original budget. So that gives me a degree of comfort. I will give some, some thought I will recommend that you give some thought to what our recourse is with uh, the power company with respect to this oversight, because uh, it represents the majority of the 550. And uh, there may be some economics here in spending a little bit of legal money uh, to recover to recover the 350,000. So I, I, I find comfort in the fact that the overrun is, is probably within you know, normal parameters. As uh, these projects usually do, this is a large project, and overruns are expected. To uh, to Trustee O'Hearn Zanata's point, we are uh, uh, living the COVID in construction, which means increased uh, increased prices. But I would recommend that if there is even a glimmer of possibility of uh, getting the three hundred fifty thousand dollars for the electrical upgrade covered, I think we should pursue it. If we if we have to spend I don't know twenty twenty five thousand dollars in legal fees and, and and be successful, it would probably be worth be worth our while. So, I'll support this motion on that basis. Trustee uh, Intamasi, you have the floor. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you. So uh, again, um, with reference to the miscalculations, so I, I need to understand. Our engineers, electrical engineers, provided us with a load capacity based on the expansion. Did they also look at the old portion of the school when they made their calculation? Is that where the disconnect is, where they miscalculated what requirement, what our requirement was going to be? So, uh, Superintendent America, you have the floor. Yeah. Uh Thank you, Mr. Chair, and for you. They did consider the, both the new addition and the old part, portion of the, or the existing portion of the building when doing the calculations. Okay, but so when, a uh, follow up, Mr. Chair, through you. So did we not also do a lighting upgrade there? Our lighting upgrade would have brought our demand for hydro down considerably. So how can, like I can't reconcile this particular difference. I would think that if the load capacity was miscalculated, that's solely on the responsibility of Milton Hydro because they provide you with the input of what you're going to need and, and, and what to design for. So I would think that a meeting with them, a high level meeting with them 
could reconcile this and it could save us $350,000. Now, if the mistake was made by our engineers, that's a different, that's a different matter altogether. So really, that's the only clarification that I want. Uh, Superintendent Merrick, you have the floor. I'm sorry, what, what was the question there? Can you repeat that? Uh, if you can point to where the miscalculation occurred, whether it was by the our engineering, consulting engineers, or was it by Milton? If it was by Milton and it can be proved without having to go to court, it would seem to me that um, the local hydro would pick up uh, the difference or would make amends for that particular uh, miscalculation. Superintendent Merrick, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the requirement to upgrade the electrical service was not identified at the time of permit, uh, but it is the view of the uh, hydro authority uh, that they can request that at any time. So um, they're requesting it now. Uh, thank you, uh, Superintendent Merrick. Uh, seeing that there are no other questions, we'll move to a recorded vote. Trustee Roshni. I'm in favor. Trustee Agnew. In favor. Trustee DeRosa. I'm in favor, Mr. Chair. Vice Chair Dewar. In favor. Trustee Guzzo. In favor. Trustee Intomasi. Abstain, Mr. Chair. Trustee Carabella. Trustee Carabella. We'll come back to Trustee Carabella. Trustee O'Brien. In favor. Trustee O'Hearn Trinata. In favor. Trustee Gubert. In favor. Trustee Kelly. In favor. We'll go back to Trustee Carabella. Um, we... I'm sorry, uh, we're voting on this motion right here. Right, motion uh, 8.4, which is uh, Bishop Redding renewal yep. funding. It's in favor. In favor, and Trustee Murphy's in favor, so the motion carries. Thank you. We'll move on to item 8.5, 2021 20, 22 capital priorities program submission. Superintendent Loss, would you like to speak to this motion? Uh, certainly, Mr. Chair, and actually, uh, Superintendent Merrick will also be speaking to it as well, but I'll maybe start it off and then I'll, if it's okay, I'll hand it over to him. Uh, attached, please find the report outlining staff suggestions for the 2021-2022 Capital Priorities Program submission. Please note that the deadline for staff to submit is Friday, May 21st. Superintendent Merrick will now walk us through some of the projects. Thank you, Superintendent Loss, and through the Chair, um, you'll see on the on, on the attached report tonight, um, we do have seven capital priorities that staff have identified uh, to go forward as part of this program. Uh, on the, the first five uh, capital priorities that we have on here, uh, and actually scrolling a little bit more, uh, if you can, to, to, the, uh, to the current list. Um, but uh, uh, the, the first five on the list are growth related projects. Um, so the first being the Milton number no. nine Catholic elementary school. Uh, we need this uh, priority for growth uh, in the South Milton community uh, with a September 2022 target date. Uh, we know this date will be difficult to achieve um, given the, the, you know, the time frame we're at right now. Uh, but we do think it's very important uh, that we get that priority uh, to further accommodate uh, elementary school students in South Milton. Uh, the second priority is the Milton number no. three Catholic Secondary School. Uh, we're looking for a, uh, an addition here. Uh, I'll explain this one a little bit because uh, it is a little bit more complicated. Uh, the school, uh, as we all know, was approved uh, in summer of 2020, so that uh, Milton number three Catholic Secondary School. Uh, when, it, when we have actually applied for this project, though, uh, the classroom loading ratio was 21 to 1 at secondary schools uh, for, uh, uh, for facility loading. Uh, we now know that it's, it's since changed to 23 to 1. Uh, so as a result, we had to remove three classrooms from our conceptual design uh, back in, uh, you know, throughout the fall this year. Uh, and we'd like to add those three classrooms back in to kind of complete our, our conceptual design. So um, this would be a small addition at Milton number three um, to add those three classrooms back in. We'd add 69 people places uh, back to the school. I'd like to have a small scope, about a million to a million and a half dollars, uh, but it would kind of complete the school uh, and we would likely construct it. If we were approved for the, the priority number two, uh, we would complete uh, that uh, addition at the same time we construct the rest of the school. Uh, the Mr. next two projects. 
our growth related projects as well. Uh, first, we had the Vision Georgetown project, uh, again, needed for future growth in September 2024. Uh, the Milton number 11 Catholic Elementary School, uh, again, for even more growth uh, we see in the future in South Milton, uh, not needed again until September 2024, uh, realizing that we still have Milton number 10, uh, which was recently funded, and then Milton number 9, the number one priority on here as well uh, to get through constructing as well. Uh, and then also number priority number five on the list, another school for North Oakville. Uh, we know we were just approved for North Oakville number four. Uh, so again, this will accommodate future growth in North Oakville, but again, not needed until at least uh, at least 2024. Uh, so it's uh, a little bit further down the road. The final two priorities on the list, number six and uh, seven. Superintendent Merrick, can you uh, hold one interrupt. more? I don't do you have a point interrupt. of privilege? I, uh, yes, I do have a point of privilege, Mr. Chair, and it's really to facilitate the discussion as it's going. I appreciate uh, uh, Superintendent Merrick's uh, briefing, and it's uh, very thorough. But it would be appropriate uh, if I uh, if there was some numbers attached to uh, the rankings and the projects so that we can follow along to see what, in order of magnitude, what kind of money we we're talking about. So we and can, I, you can, I'm not asking Rosa, you numbers. can ask that question. You can ask that question after the uh, the information is presented, and I'm sure that uh, Superintendent Merrick will have that available yeah, for you. I wanted to render the process a little simpler, Mr. Chair, but uh, I'll concede to your suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please proceed, Superintendent Merrick. Well, I'll just wrap up quickly here. Thank you on uh, on priorities number six and seven. Uh, so the last two priorities on the list you see there are not growth related. Uh, they would be facility condition or renewal related. Um, you remember these projects from past uh, capital priorities rounds. The board has applied for these projects several times in the past. Uh, with no success. Um, so we need to consider, uh, you know, as a board of trustees, uh, do we want to consider, uh, continue to apply for these projects or, or look at other, perhaps, uh, you know, smaller renewal alternatives uh, for those schools? Um, so I'll, I'll go through them quickly, but uh, we have number six priority is the Holy Cross rebuild. Uh, and we, we know that back in 2004, the board purchased the property, we call it the Georgetown West property, um, to, to be the, the future home of Holy Cross. Uh, and we've applied for funding for that building since 2009. Uh, it's been at least five uh, uh, funding applications that we put in for that building, uh, but it has been unsuccessful on all occasions. Uh, and that building has a facility condition index of 36. Um, it, it is the, the highest facility condition end of, index of any of our Halton Catholic buildings, uh, but the provincial average is about 30%. Um, so we're only you know, a little bit below the provincial average as far as, uh, as, far as facility condition. Uh, and then the number seven priority, um, this was first applied for. It's a rebuild of the, of the St. Dominic uh, School facility. Uh, so it be a knockdown and total rebuild on, on that site. Uh, this was first applied for back in 2017. Uh, we've been denied twice on this, uh, on this priority. Um, the facility condition index for St. Dominic's is currently 25%, so it's a little bit better than the provincial average uh, as far as facility condition. Uh, and this was originally part of a, a people accommodation review we did in South Oakville um, back in 2016, uh, and the original plan was actually to uh, to, to use the St. James facility. So, um, you know, move all the students from St. Dominic's over to St. James for a period where we knocked down and rebuilt the St. Dominic building uh, before moving them all back into the into the new home uh, at St. Dominic's. Uh, as we know now, the the St. James building has been transformed into our Thomas Burton Oakville site. Um, so it's not really possible to to to, to still do that uh, that relocation. Um, so if we didn't want to pursue this uh, number seven option, um, we would have to look at some way to accommodate them elsewhere, uh, either on the site or, or elsewhere in Oakville um, during the construction process. So um, six and seven are kind of up for trustee debate as to whether we want to continue on with those or look at other uh, renewal options there. Uh, and you can see also on the table in front of you right now, um, the region is supportive of childcare uh, facilities in five of those locations. So um, you can see that on the table there. So. Uh, Superintendent Lofts and myself would be happy to take any questions that trustees have on uh, on these uh, on these items. So we'll read the motion first, and we'll get a, uh, a mover and a seconder. Uh, be it resolved that the Halton Catholic District School Board approve the proposed ranking of capital projects for the 2021-22 Capital Priorities Program as follows: Rankings of the 2021-22 Capital. Priorities project list. Number one, Milton. Number nine, Catholic Elementary School. Number two, Milton. Number three, Catholic Secondary School Edition. Number three, Vision Georgetown. Number one, Catholic Elementary School. 
Number four, Milton. Number 11, Catholic Elementary School. Number five, North Oakville. Number three, Catholic Elementary School. Number six, Georgetown West Catholic Elementary School slash Holy Cross Replacement Facility. Number seven, St. Dominic Catholic Elementary School Rebuild. Be it resolved that the board authorizes staff to submit the board's 2021 Capital Priorities Business Case Submission to the Minister of Education for funding consideration as outlined in the relevant ministry memorandum. Can I have a mover? Moved by Vice Chair Duart. Do we have a seconder? I'll second it, Mr. Chair. Seconded by Trustee Antomasi. We will open the floor for discussion. I see Trustee O'Hearn Chernata uh, hand up first. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Chair, I would like to move an amendment as far as this motion is concerned, as far as ranking is concerned. Okay, can you state your amendment? Yes, I'd like to uh, strike out and replace. So I'd like to move number six, Georgetown West Catholic Edu uh, Elementary School and Holy Cross Replacement Facility, wish number three, Vision Georgetown number one Catholic Elementary School. So I'd like to switch six and three. Okay, are we able to show that on the screen highlighted for trustees, just to make it clear? Can you give us just one moment? Absolutely. If you could reorder it, yes, that'd be great. Okay, so Trustee O'Hearn Chernata is as it is on the screen. Is that your intent? Absolutely, yes, exactly. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So we will uh, open debate on the amendment. You have the floor. Second. Oh, sorry. We need. need yep. Yeah, we need a seconder. Sorry. Second. Uh, seconded by Vice Chair Duart. Uh, so we can open debate. Uh, uh, Trustee O'Hearn Chernata, you have, can I have five a, minutes. Can I have a sorry. point of privilege. Please. What's your point of privilege, Trustee Tomasi? So we've already made the rearrangements, but we don't know yet from Superintendent Merrick and Superintendent Lofts what the criteria used was in the ranking. So we can rearrange all we want, but if we look at the dates and when they're supposed to be, um, when the delivery is, is to occur, how can we make changes without knowing the other items before that. So that is your privilege to ask those questions during debate. So Trustee O'Hearn, Chernata, you have uh, the floor. You have five minutes. Thank you, and I won't need five minutes. Um, as uh, Superintendent Merrick uh, did speak to, um, up in Halton Hills here, they've been trying to get a new building for Holy Cross since 2009. Um, as I understand it, and, and Superintendent Merrick can correct me, uh, you have to go for growth or renewal. You cannot combine the two. Uh, so because that building is in good shape and Halton Catholic District School Board takes care of our buildings, which is wonderful, and our 37,000 students should be appreciative of that, uh, I think it's time with Vision Georgetown, that was supposed to, the last information I had, that was going to be built in 2021. So here we sit in 2021 and nothing's happening. 
I actually live very close to where the Vision Georgetown is going to be and nothing is going on over there. I'm afraid that if we keep it down at number six, that the ministry will look at it as a renewal and again, we'll be, uh, it'll be opposed and we won't receive funding. I want to put all my energy and all my breath into getting a new school for these folks up here in Halton Hills who have been told no, I don't know, five or six times. So I'd like to offer up to my fellow trustees for consideration to please switch the ranking and please ask Superintendent Merrick as many questions as you need to feel satisfied that this is something we could potentially move forward on. Thank you for the consideration. Uh, thank you. So we'll start a new speakers list regarding the amendment. Uh, Trustee O'Brien, you have the floor. Thank you through Mr. Chair and thank you um, Trustee Hernson Odo uh, for bringing this forward. I, I'm just digesting this myself now. I, I, I'm not as familiar with the geography of Georgetown as I'd like to be. I, I get up there as much as I can to try to familiarize myself. Um, so can you um, Superintendent Merrick, explain what that would look like. Um, so are we looking at number three would be a, um, a not a rebuild, but I mean a, a rebuild and number six would be a, I'm sorry, can you just kind of lay down what that looks like, please? Uh, Superintendent Merrick, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Just, just to clarify, Trustee O'Brien, you're, you're talking the Difference between priority three and priority six? Please, yes. All right, so uh, priority three uh, would be a replacement of the existing Holy Cross School uh, that we have in uh, in North Georgetown right now. So uh, back in 2004, uh, the board was hopeful of getting this replacement facility for Holy Cross. Uh, so they actually bought uh, land uh, just a little bit further west of the, uh, of the existing Holy Cross School uh, site um, to house that new facility on there. Uh, and we've been applying for a new facility there uh, on, on numerous occasions. Um, we have been unsuccessful to date. So this would be a, a replacement of an existing school. So the priority three there, Georgetown West Holy Cross replacement is replacing the existing Holy Cross school um, with a new school facility on a different site. The number six priority is the, uh, is the Vision Georgetown number one Catholic elementary school. Um, that would be adding a new school on a new site uh, in a new development. So uh, the whole southwest area of, uh, of Georgetown is slated for development. Um, like Trustee Orangenata, it's been slated for development for quite a while. Uh, it's been holed up in various uh, legal appeals and, uh, and litigation. Um, but we do have two sites in there designated for school sites. Uh, at some point when that development comes online, um, there'll be a lot of, uh, I think there's 8,000 units uh, slotted to go in there. Uh, and then we would need schools in that area. So we do have two sites in there as well. Um, I, I think moving it down the list, um, like, like Trustee Hearns not said, there's no development there right now. So I, I think it's a, a less urgent need. Um, and knowing that it probably has a less likelihood of being approved by the ministry because um, they definitely want to see urgent need and have the money flowing to urgent projects. Um, so I'm yeah. not sure we would need that one right now, but I think we do want it on the list uh, to signal that uh, we are expecting that development to go at some point. And uh, we would need that Vision Georgetown number one school uh, at some point in the future. Okay, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Follow up to Trustee O'Hearn Zanoda. Um, if that's okay. Yes, please go. Uh, please so, proceed. Trustee O'Hearn Zanoda, just get your rationale because you know your constituents much better than I do. Um, are you sensing then that there's been not a promise, but an anticipation of the Georgetown West Holy Cross? Um, community and it's not coming through and um, we need to at least move something in that direction with the people that need something fairly soon. Am I getting that kind of sense from you? Um, through you, Mr. Chair, to Trustee O'Brien. I mean, I don't have a lawyer beside me, so I can't speak to every stakeholder, but I think when they've been asking since 2009, I think right. like it's almost like banging your head against a pole and and with COVID and the pandemic it hasn't really there's other issues that are distracting my stakeholders up here but I think it's time to give them the new school that they deserve. Okay thank you uh, Trustee Zerner and Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you uh, Trustee DeRosa you have the floor. Thank you Mr. Chair I uh, in principle I would uh, um, like to support uh, 
Trustee O'Hearn's in North as appeal. And uh, I admire her advocating for her local community. Um, my problem with this is that I don't know how the numbers are being shifted back and forth. And uh, uh, forgive me if uh, I maybe focus on numbers too much, but they are Im they are important. I got to know what what type of numbers are being bandied around here. Um, Oakville's uh, ranking is unaffected, and I'm generally uh, okay with that, uh, pending anything that I'm not seeing. But what I am not seeing for sure is uh, is the dollar values assigned to these projects. And I think that's important for us to know. So uh, I don't know how you're going to provide that. But, um, you know, without that kind of information, uh, how can we gain the comfort that this motion needs to uh, move forward? I don't know. Uh, Superintendent Merrick, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. And through you. Um, I, I guess the first thing to point out is that um, none of these projects would take money from the board. So uh, the ministry evaluates every project that comes in to them uh, across the province uh, and then kind of ranks them all in terms of priority. Uh, and then they'll have a certain pool of funding to go out uh, to all the school boards across the province. Uh, and they'll start with the higher priority projects and move their way down the list uh, until, the, until the funding is exhausted. So. Um, it's not like the board has a certain allocation of money to, to distribute across these projects. Uh, every one of these projects is uh, evaluated on their own merits uh, and then ranked across the province uh, as, far as, uh, uh, as far as which ones are funded. Now, they do take into consideration uh, the priority ranking of each of the projects. Um, so having one further down the list uh, may mean it's less likely in the eyes of the, of the province to be funded. Um, but it doesn't behold the province from, you know, they could, they could approve priority one and priority four and, and skip over two and three on their own if they, if they like. And we've seen that in the past. They've done that to us in the past. So they've skipped over uh, higher priorities uh, to go to the ones for them on the list that they think are, are higher priority. So it, Trustee DeRosa, if you want, I can give you rough estimates on, uh, on how much each of these uh, projects would be worth. Uh, but in reality, we're not spending any of the board funds. It would be all additional funding coming from the ministry uh, to support these projects on, on a business case basis. So uh, we wouldn't be dipping into any any board funds uh, to do so. So, so uh, uh, Superintendent Merrick, I uh, just ballpark numbers so that it can give me some comfort. So if you can quickly go down the list, uh, I could write down uh, essentially the numbers we're we're talking about. The other question that comes up as I hear you speak, um, are we suggesting then that, that these projects are not within the scope of our budget because the ministry approved them? And, and I'm on, uh, maybe this is a better question for, for uh, Superintendent Loft. How do I we account for these the projects? Chair. So uh, Superintendent Merrick, so um, do you have a, uh, a budget estimate on the rankings one to seven that you could provide us? Yeah, for sure. Okay, thank you. So a, a typical new school with a childcare, and these are all fairly large schools, so they'd be in the in the neighborhood of five or uh, 550 people places up to about 700 people places. Um, they would be ranging from about 15 million dollars to 18 million dollars, and that's for priorities one and then three to seven. The number two priority, like I mentioned uh, in my intro there, uh, it is just an addition of three classrooms uh, at uh, Milton number three Catholic secondary school, which was already approved for a little over a little under forty two million dollars uh, back last summer. Uh, that would be about a one point five million dollar addition. So um, number two at one point five million dollars and the rest at about fifth, between fifteen and eighteen million dollars. OK, so that's that gives me a. That gives me yes. a benchmark at least. Thank you very and much. On, your, on the second half of your question there, um, yep. if we're looking at uh, how they're funded. It would be additional funding coming from the ministry to support the project of that size um, that, would, that would be allocated to the board to spend on that project. So there's, there's a funding formula or, or a, uh, a funding, uh, there's a funding formula that would go in uh, with each of those projects. It, it looks at the pupil places. Um, so like Milton number nine, our number one priority, uh, if we applied for that at our, our typical uh, elementary school size of, uh, of 671 people places with a five room childcare center, uh, that comes in around $17.5 million. 
uh, would be the allocation that would be attached to a school of that size uh, with a child care of that size. Thank you. So I'll ask the accountant's question to uh, to the accountant in the room. Superintendent Loft, are these off book, these numbers, or are they in in our books? Superintendent Loft, you have the floor. Um, sorry. Trustee DeRosa, can you please explain what you mean by off books? Well, have we recorded them as receivables? Because they're committed funds. Again, I, I'm not really understanding the question. What funds are committed? No funds have been well, committed. Well, the government, I think I heard the Superintendent Merrick say that these uh, these projects have, all been, uh, have already been approved. So if they're approved, they're receivable, or if they're not receivable, the, the funds have been received already. So I'm just I'm just curious to see whether these funds are recorded in our books or not. That's all. Um, uh, Superintendent Lofts, I think uh, Superintendent Merrick has his hand up to answer, to clarify. Superintendent Merrick, yeah. you have the floor. Thanks, Mr. Chair, and through you. Sorry, I wanted to clarify that none of these projects on this list are approved. Um, the only one that has a portion of it approved is number two, where the Milton number three Catholic secondary school uh, building is approved. The addition, which you see here as priority number two, is not approved yet. So all of these would go forward to the ministry for consideration before they are approved and have the funding allocated to our board. Uh, super, uh, Trustee DeRosa, does that uh, help clarify the question? I think so. I just want a very quick follow-up. So at the point where they are approved, and this is for Superintendent Loft, at the point where the projects are approved, then the they are recorded in the books as receivables. Is that correct? Uh, Superintendent Loft? To you, Mr. Chair, no, that's not correct, Trustee DeRosa. Um, okay. These funds aren't approved. They are expensed as we receive the expense and we have the funding source set up. We do have a, um, a budget established to pay for the, to the, for the construction. We would set up a receivable after we have already incurred the expense, but we would not set up a receivable um, if the expense has not occurred. Uh, Trustee DeRosa, did you have a clarifying question? Uh, I will take that at face value for the moment, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Trustee and Tomasi, you have the floor. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, so let's put this into proper or into context. The list that we have before us is what we would refer to as a wish list, which we then submit to the ministry for them to consider. Is that correct, uh, Superintendent Merrick? Superintendent Merrick, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm not, I'm not sure I'd call it a wish list, but it is our priority list. Uh, it is unlikely that we would be funded for all of the projects, uh, but we do want to have them you know, in somewhat of a priority order um, so the minister can see which ones we, we think we need the most uh, versus others that we, we think we may need uh, further down the road. Okay, so, so Demonte, do you have a follow Yeah, yes, I do. So, um, so, sorry for using the word wish. Okay, so it's a priority list. On that priority, we already know that certain projects will go ahead depending on the funding allotment the ministry announces. It would seem to me that the, the two that are most need are the ones that are renewal because the growth related projects would be front end or would be fast tracked anyways by the ministry just to respond to uh, population growth. So I would suggest that six and seven would go ahead of the list. Therefore, because they're smaller expenditures anyways, and then the other ones are going to be subject to new funds for new construction and 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 some of which have already been have already received a nod. Uh, Sup Superintendent Merrick, did you want to comment? That was a Thank question, you, Mr. Chair. Sorry, my my hand, my hand was still up there, but it, I, I can comment quickly, I guess. Um, so none of them have been approved yet. So I wanted to stress that none of them have been approved yet. 
Um, but Trustee Intimas is right that some of the growth ones um, will be, are, are more likely to be approved because they are growth related uh, and it, it makes for a very easy case um, when you have a, you know, fast growth like we have in Milton to fund those, those schools. So, um, and then I also wanna clarify that, uh, you know, numbers, I guess it's, it's three and seven now, they might be slightly less. They may be closer to the $15 million uh, investment versus the, the $17.5, $18 million investment for like priority number one, but they are they're in similar in size uh, as far as request uh, versus all the other priorities as well. The only one that's substantially smaller is the number two priority, uh, which is about $1.5 million. Uh, Trustee and Demasi, did you have a, a clarify, clarifying question? So, uh, yes, I do. So would it not make sense that put the ones that have been on our books uh, on the priority list first, and then the ones that are going to receive funding because it's going to be new construction geared to population, uh, to meeting population growth. It, it's just, it, it makes sense to me to go that route as opposed to hand selecting any individual one. Uh, Superintendent Mayor, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, th that is a decision of trustees to go that route. It, it doesn't preclude the ministry from passing over some of those priorities anyways. Uh, I think exactly. it was two or three rounds ago, uh, Holy Cross was listed as number one and it was passed over by the ministry. So um, it, it's a, that's a trustee decision. Um, I, I do want to stress that the Milton number nine one, um, because we are using uh, or plan to be using next year, uh, Milton number 10 Catholic elementary school as a secondary school in Milton until Milton number three is built. It will put a lot of pressure on making sure that we get Milton number nine uh, constructed uh, because that's kind of our next uh, school in line for elementary school accommodations in Milton. Um, so I, I, I think there, there should be a lot of emphasis on that one as well, but uh, I'll leave that to trustees to, uh, uh, to decide which order to put them in. Uh, thank you, Trustee O'Brien, you have the floor. Uh, thank you through Mr. Chair, and hopefully this will help um, support Trustee O'Hernandez. Motion, um, trust, um, Superintendent Merrick, the EDC kind of catch up race that we're always in. Um, we buy the land, we wait for the developer to build. Um, if we go for this, won't that help us in the EDC race here in the sense that, um, if this, if, um, there's, um, <clears throat> If we're not going to actually build right now with vision number georgetown number one um will not a developer kind of get the edc charges in faster i'm just speculating superintendent merrick you have the floor yeah thank you mr chair and three so i guess the first thing to clarify is that the edc uh the edcs are for the land only um which will come through uh the developer as they take out housing permits uh, this funding here, we're looking for reduction for the building that would go on that land. Um, so they are two separate pots of funding. Um, I guess in theory, with Trustee O'Brien's uh, shot there, that um, you know, if we didn't buy the land for Vision Georgetown Number One, uh, we wouldn't be incurring uh, any any cost on our on our line of credit for that. At the same point, I don't see any houses going in right now in the Vision Georgetown area. So we wouldn't be generating those, those EDCs uh, for the housing permits there. So we have no income as well, but um, I, I think I, I do see that Vision Georgetown one is one that could wait a little bit because we don't see housing starts there yet. Um, so maybe it would be a, a higher priority on a future round of capital priorities uh, once we see houses starting to go in there as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, Trustee O'Brien, did you have a follow-up? Um, no, not on the amendment. Okay, thank you. Uh, trustee, uh, or sorry, uh, Superintendent Merrick, could you describe for trustees some of the, the physical challenges with that site? Um, you know, maybe describe the top topography or the neighborhood it's in, and then the age of the buildings, the number of additions, just so people can get, uh, trustees can get context of what we're talking about. Yeah, I assume you're talking about the Holy Cross facility, Mr. Chair? Yeah, yeah sorry, I should have pointed that out. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, absolutely. So the Holy Cross facility, um, it, it's one of our oldest, this is our, our second or third oldest facility uh, that we have uh, in the board. Uh, and it was actually constructed as a very small facility. 
and it's had seven additions to it. So there's eight different portions uh, to that building. So it's had seven additions on it. They were adding, you know, back in the late 50s, early 60s, adding classrooms to it one at a time as, as enrollment grew. Um, so it's a bit of a, a piecemeal assembly of, uh, of different parts from different eras, uh, and it's kind of grown uh, throughout the, uh, uh, you know, throughout the, the history of the board. Uh, the site is also very challenging. Um, it's the, the, the current building is actually placed at the top of a hill, um, and we actually have a setup right now where the, the primary play area is at one level. You walk down a, a couple flights of stairs to the junior play area, and you walk down probably, you know, three, four, five flights of stairs to the senior play area. So there's a lot of accessibility issues on that site uh, and getting around the site. We, we have a, uh, it's also a two level kind of back split uh, design. So accessibility issues both in the building and on the, on the, on the lot as well. Uh, and then the other challenge we have there as well is that um, there's actually no room for portable classrooms at the site. Um, so right now the, the school is kind of right at uh, full capacity right now. Um, we don't have any ability to add portables there because of the big topography change on the site. Um, so it really limits our ability to add uh, future portables there. It also hinders us when, if that Vision Georgetown area ever does become into development, um, we really can't send those kids to other schools in Georgetown because we're already at capacity at most of our other Georgetown schools. Uh, in the south, we have you know, St. Bridget, where probably the nearest uh, school of Vision Georgetown already has 14 portables. Uh, St. Francis is a very small school, can't take more portables. Uh, and as well as Holy Cross, we have no ability for portables there as well. So uh, even getting this uh, Holy Cross replacement facility on the new site uh, would resolve a lot of those accessibility issues. Uh, and it would also allow us to add portables there to absorb some of that Vision Georgetown growth until we got that priority number six school uh, for the Vision Georgetown area uh, specifically. Uh, thank you. Are there any other uh, questions, trustees? If not, uh, Trustee O'Hearn Chernata will close. Uh, seeing there's no questions, uh, Trustee O'Hearn Chernata, please uh, close your debate. Thank you to you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Superintendent Merrick, for all that valuable information. And thank you to my fellow trustees for asking those good questions. I really will be short and sweet. I just really would appreciate the support to try and move this project forward uh, for one more time. Um, I will continue to lobby um, our local government also to put some pressure on them to uh, help us with the ministry request. So I, I'm asking you to support this amendment and just let me change the two Georgetown facilities in ranking. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So we will go to a recorded vote. Uh, please be reminded that we are only voting on the amendment, which is uh, the switching of uh, Holy Cross and uh, the Vision Georgetown in the priority ranking. Uh, we'll start open the uh, the recorded vote with Trustee Agnew. How do you vote? In favor. Trustee DeRosa. In favor. Uh, Vice Chair Duart. In favor. Trustee Guzzo. In favor. Trustee Antomasi. In favor. Trustee Carabella. <laughs> Trustee Carabella. We'll come back to Trustee Carabella. Trustee O'Brien? In favor. Trustee O'Hernsternata? In favor. Trustee Goober? In favor, Mr. Chair. Trustee Kelly? In favor. Trustee Roshni? In favor. Uh, Trustee Carabella? Yes, in favor. Sorry, I would miss no, that. <laughs> no problem at all. Thank you. And uh, Trustee Murphy's in favor. So the amendment passes. We will now go back to the main motion as amended. There is a, um, a speaker's list. Um, Trustee DeRosa, did you want to uh, to speak? So on the speaker's list, we have Trustee DeRosa, Trustee O'Brien, and Trustee Intomasi. Mr. Chair, I'm going to cede my turn because I think I made the points that I wanted to make in the previous conversation. Thank you. Trustee O'Brien. Um, thank you through you, Mr. Chair. Um, to Superintendent Merrick, I see on this priority list in the ranking, um, there's a column for child care and keeping in mind how important child uh, care is, some of the schools, some of the um, projects have a yes and some of them have a no. 
On the on the nose, does that mean that there's a child care facility already there and we don't need to rebuild? Or does that mean there's not one there at all? Uh, Superintendent Mayor, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair, and through you. Um, we actually consult with the uh, the region of Halton, uh, their child care services group, on uh, on whether or not there's a need for child care in that area, uh, and they make the decision there. So, uh, as part of our application, with whatever uh, list we uh, we we approve here tonight, um, the if we ask for a child care to be attached to one of those priorities, uh, we need to sign attestation from the region as well um, that would go forward. Um, as part of our package, so that they support it in the area, uh, and they do all the analysis around seeing if there's a need uh, for uh, for child care centers in those areas uh, based on their current uh, uh, centers that are open, uh, both private and public centers uh, in the area. So it's it's with cons consultation of the uh, child care experts uh, at the at the region of Halton. Trustee O'Brien, do you have a follow up? Okay, thank you. Just a short one. Um, is that a definitive de decision? Like, is that a moving um, document in the sense that that's reassessed over time. Like once that decision is made, then is that just final? Superintendent Merrick, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. They, they, they reassess their numbers and they, they, they pop out their data uh, on a continuous basis. Uh, but we met with them last week, actually. So we, we um, actually might have been two weeks ago now, but uh, we meet with them on a regular basis and we had our, our update uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, and that was the, the list they gave us. So uh, knowing that we have to submit this to the ministry, this request for uh, uh, for capital by May 21st, uh, this would be the definitive list for this round. Uh, but I thought to say in future rounds, it, it may not change as, uh, as centers open and close. Thank you, that's uh, very clear. Uh, Trustee and Tomasi, you have the floor. Mr. Chair, my answers were satisfied, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, we don't have if we don't have anybody else who likes to speak. We can go to a recorded vote on the motion as amended. Uh, we don't. Oh, my sorry, I'm, I'm just having a little technical difficulty. My uh, cursor went down. Uh, we can move to a recorded vote. Uh, Trustee DeRosa. I'm in favor, Mr. Chair. Vice Chair Dewar. In favor. Trustee Guzzo. In favor. Trustee Damasi. In favor. Trustee Carabello. In favor. Trustee O'Brien. In favor. Trustee O'Hearn Trinata. In favor. Trustee Goober. In favor. Trustee Kelly. In favor. Trustee Roshti. In favor. Trustee Agnew. In favor. And Trustee Murphy's in favor. So the uh, motion as amended carries. Moving on to item 8.6, multi-year strategic plan, mission, vision, and values. Uh, Vice Chair Dewart, would you like to speak uh, to this motion and then to read the motion. Sure, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce and speak on the multi-year strategic plan as the chair of this uh, steering committee. Uh, Section 169.1 uh, of the Education Act requires every board to develop a multi-year plan aimed at achieving the goals of promoting student achievement and well-being and delivering effective and appropriate education program to its peoples. The plan shall be for three or more years. Our policy I-44 outlines the strategic planning process that we follow. Between February, February 11th and February 18th, 2021, HCDSB stakeholders were asked to provide feedback on suggested changes to each of the mission, vision, and value statements to help inform the next HCDSB multi-year strategic plan. Where revisions were suggested, respondents were asked to indicate a preference between the original text and the revised option. Respondents also had the opportunity to provide comments. The survey responses received were considered at the April 8, 2021 Multi-Year Strategic Planning Committee meeting. The summary of survey results is presented in your board meeting package. The committee has re recommended that the results of the report 
be forwarded to, to the regular board meeting, this regular board meeting for acceptance and approval. Mr. Chair, should I read the motion? Uh, yes, please read the motion. Resolved that the Halton Catholic District School Board accept the recommendations of the multi-year strategic planning committee uh, that based on stakeholder feedback that the board accept results and make changes to HCDSP mission, vision and values. Can I have a mover? Trustee Agnew. Moved by Trustee Agnew, seconded by? I'll second, Trustee Guzzo. By Trustee Guzzo. Uh, Vice Chair Duart, uh, please lead the discussion. To you, Mr. Chair. So we have the results of the survey in the package. Rosie, could you uh, put up a summary of the survey? The graph should be sufficient. So as stated, the mission, vision, and values were discussed at the multi strategic plan committee, uh, steering committee meeting. And the changes uh, to each of the items, you can see them in front of you. The original and revised were sent out for stakeholder feedback. And the results of each of the items is in the graph below. So in the first, Respond first. Uh, uh, first uh, query that we had in the mission: 66% were for the changes, 34% were for retaining the original. Rosie, could you move down, please? The second question that was asked on the vision: we had. Can you go down, Rosie? 66% were for the changes, and 34% were for the original. And moving down to values, which was broken down into two different, two or three different uh, categories. Uh, we have 33% uh, which said that we should uh, go for, we should retain the original and 67% was for revised. And moving further down the list, for values, we had 53% which said we should go for the revised and 47% which said we should stay with the original. So the multi strategic planning committee Met and decided to put this to the board of trustees for approval. Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. We will open up the floor to um, to any trustees who have any questions. Uh, Trustee O'Brien, you have the floor. Um, thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, first question is to Director Daly. Um, Director Daly, the present multi-year strategic plan that we are in now did we did the previous board vote on that and if so when if you know uh director daly uh thank you and through you mr chair i believe the the strategic plan that we're in now uh trustee o'brien the board approved the strategic priorities and then the um, kind of the operational part of the plan was presented to the board as information in the year that it started. Trustee O'Brien, do you have a follow-up? Yes, thank you, sir. So I'm, I'm trying to understand the process here then. So then are we only going to vote on the priorities? Is that our only obligation? And then, I mean, I'm I reading the Education Act that I thought we we voted on everything. So um, if I get clarification on that, Ms. Um, Director Daly. Uh, Director Daly, have the floor. Yeah, thank you and through you, Mr. Chair. Um, our our policy um, uh, does designate that uh, essentially uh, the Board of Trustees approves uh, each part of the um, of the strategic planning process, and I think. The final approval was included in the current policy. I believe it was in included exactly uh, for that reason, Trustee O'Brien, that um, when the last one was established, uh, we didn't kind of go that final step. I, I believe that was some of the rationale for our current policy. Uh, thank you. Uh, before we proceed, it's uh, almost 10 o'clock, so we'll have to vote to extend. 
past 10 o'clock. Can I have a mover? Moved by Vice Chair Duart. Do we have a seconder? Trustee Agnew. Trustee Agnew will go to a recorded vote. Trustee DeRosa. I'm opposed. Opposed. Uh, Vice Chair Duart. In favor. Trustee Guzzo. In favor. Trustee Antomasi. Opposed. Trustee Carabella. Opposed. Trustee O'Brien. Opposed. Trustee O'Hearn Chernata. In favor. Trustee Goober. In favor. Trustee Kelly. In favor. Trustee Roshti. In favor. Trustee Agnew. In favor. Uh, Trustee Murphy's in favor. We need two thirds, which is six, and we only have five. Therefore, we won't Mr. extend Chair, this. We have opened up discussion on this item, so we should continue. Yeah, let me finish oh, my sorry. ruling. It's I'm, I'm, I'm always it's always glad to have helping hands, except it seems when I'm shoveling my driveway, nobody's to be seen. Um, since we started this action item, we must finish this action item, uh, and we won't be proceeding after this action item. So. Uh, we are at uh, the speakers list, which I'll run through. It's Trustee DeRosa, Trustee Antomasi, Trustee Agnew. Trustee DeRosa, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, have an, I have an issue with, with this um, item uh, with respect to process. And it relates to, first of all, uh, trying to establish a, uh, trying to change a, a mission statement that has survived from what I understand, and I, I welcome any corrections to my impressions here, that has withstood this test of time for the period of probably 15 to 20 years. I understand that when it was developed, it was developed with full, a fulsome consultation of all the stakeholders. Um, and it was developed with a fulsome uh, consultation of uh, um, polling of all. I I want to support the development and the and the change if it's warranted. But we need to uh, we need to be mindful of the fact that we need we're changing something that's withstood the test of time, and. Um, it appears to me that we're doing it in a very summarily way. Um, the other uh, objection I have to this, and the reason why I tried to get it off the the, the agenda, is because, you know, we're we're approving it piecemeal, uh, without knowing what the total context is. So, I can't approve a change in isolation, whether it be at the in the mission statement or any other part without understanding what the total picture is. So my, my, my suggestion is that uh, we develop the update to our multi-year strategic plan, present it, uh, go through the proper process, and then approve it as a whole. And then from there, we can take direction on the policies that, that need to be put in place. But this is like, I can't shake the feeling that we're, we're making uh, changes for which we don't know what the overall impact is. And this is why I will not support this motion, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Trustee DeRosa, for your um, input. Uh, up next, we have Trustee Tomasi. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Um, with reference to the process, so we've gone through an ad hoc committee, which is referred to as the steering committee. Is this particular strategic, why is it coming to the board? Are we not going to policy to vet this particular, these particular changes step by step? That's my first question. Uh, uh, Director Daly, would you like to answer that? Um, sure, I can, I can try to. Um, thank you and three, Mr. Chair. So uh, the ad hoc committee or steering committee is, as um, Trustee Antomasi uh, mentioned, uh, we did have a, a, a discussion um, at that committee. 
uh, a committee of the whole board, and then uh, it's coming forward to the board of trustees to make the final determination. Trustee Antomasi, do you have a follow-up? Yes, I do. So, um, generally speaking, our bylaws require us to go to policy with any new um, policy, a multi-year strategic plan, uh, even though we have a separate policy, is a new policy. So, are you telling me that we are now combining first reading, second reading, and third reading all at the board this evening? Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, I don't think I said first, second, or third reading, Trustee Antomasi. What I'm suggesting is that we're following policy I-44 as it's laid out, uh, where an ad hoc or a steering committee is established, and it brings recommendations to the board of trustees. It's not to change the existing policy. It's to start the process of building the next strategic plan. So uh, follow up, Mr. Chair. Yes, so, please proceed. So a multi-year strategic plan is essentially a new policy. In order for it to pass, it has to go through three readings. We haven't even had one reading because a steering committee is only advisory in capacity. It's only the policy committee that sends items to the board for actions. And if it bypasses step one, or sorry, if it combines step one or step two and three, when the policy sends it up to the board, then the re requirement is two thirds. And that's per, as per our operating policy number one. I'm confused. We set up a, a, a committee, a steering committee, but we don't follow our governance and we don't follow our procedures within our bylaws. I, I, I don't understand what we're doing. It seems that we're creating a new process to facilitate this multi-year strategic plan. This is not the way a multi-year strategic plan is done. The steering committee uh, collects the information, the information gets sent down to policy, policy sends it up to the board for approval. We're bypassing many steps as we did at the beginning when we even established the multi-year, st the steering committee. It was done unilaterally by five trustees, which a multi-year strategic plan, according to policy I-40, which is really the policy we're under, requires participation by all trustees. The current policy I-40 that we have before us was amended by staff without ever being brought to the, to the board for approval. I submit that we are st still under the policy I-40 from 2013, which is what was used for the last multi-year strategic plan, which was never approved. Only parts of it Fine. were approved. Uh, thank, thank you for your uh, opinion, um, Trustee Antomasi. Trustee Agnew, you have the floor. Thank you for you, Mr. Chair. Just a couple of comments. I don't know that I have a specific question, but I do want to comment on this for anyone that is from the corporate world. I've yet to see an organization um, that keeps their um, mission, vision, and values for an overly extended amount of time. Um, it's not abnormal to go through and review those to make sure that they are um, up to date and reflective of the community or the customers with which they are serving. And so um, I understand what Trustee DeRose is trying to say about uh, serving the test of time, but when it comes to uh, mission, vision, and values, it's, it's really important to make sure that those are current and they are up to date. Um, and this is one of the first steps of the strategic planning process. Um, and what I will say is uh, when we go to take a look at this tonight and, and vote on this, if we get there, is it's I think it's key to remember and to remind my fellow trustees that this did go for stakeholder feedback. We received stakeholder feedback that has been presented to us. It has been broken down by color. Um, it is barely clearly stated what the feedback from our stakeholders has been. And I would just ask that we not dismiss that and that we pay attention. Uh, the whole point of going out for stakeholder feedback is just that. Um, and so for it to come back and to be um, 
dismissed, I think would be extremely disappointing and it would negate the, the whole point of doing that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your uh, opinion, Trustee Agnew. Trustee Guzzo, you have the floor. Thank you through you, Mr. Chair. Just a couple of things. Um, this is not a policy. I'm not sure where the confusion's coming in. It's the multi-year strategic plan. It's guided by a policy, oh, actually. It's not point, point of order. What Mr. is the point Mr. of order? Can you um, state your point of order, um, Trustee O'Brien? Of course. I believe I was next in the queue after Trustee Aiden. Uh I don't see it that way. Actually, I don't have you on the list. I think you spoke to this already also. I don't I don't have you on uh on that was previously we have Trustee O'Hearn Trinata. Uh oh actually maybe oh you spoke already. You you were the first one to speak, then Trustee DeRosa, Trustee Antomasi, then Agnew. And then uh I have you after Trustee Agnew again, and yes. oh, I'm sorry. That's me, for now. Uh, to speak to this though yet. Yes, yeah, I you're, you're correct. I don't, mind going, I don't mind going back okay. in the queue. So, uh, yeah, my, my apologies. I will, I will this is, I will this is a, my, I will this is my. our, thank you. Okay, this is our low tech. So, Trustee, Trustee Guzzo and, and uh, Vice Chair Duart haven't spoken yet, they're on the list. Trustee O'Brien is back on the list, and then uh, Trustee DeRosa also. Um, so Trustee Guzzo, sorry for interrupt, for, uh, interruption, please proceed. Um, thank you, I was just saying that this is not a policy, that it's a multi-year strategic plan. And just to Trustee Agnew's point, we asked for stakeholder feedback, we've gone through this. I feel like we are being counterproductive, you know, you know, one of the comments made was that only five trustees, every trustee has been given the same opportunity to participate in this, in the multi-year strategic plan, and we ratified it at our last meeting, and it was public. So I think that we need to just start moving on with this, and if people don't want to participate, then that's their choice. However, we are governed procedurally with our com our committees, and the fact remains is is with the multi-year strategic plan, a simple majority is all that is needed to pass. And we're also looking at stakeholder feedback. I think that's the biggest thing. Our multi-year strategic plan requires stakeholder feedback. And that's what we sought. And that's what the recommendations have come forward. And that's what we need to deal with this evening. Uh, thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Dewart, you have the floor. Hey, Mr. Chair. First of all, I'd like to make a correction. Uh, I heard that uh, somebody stated, uh, one of our, my colleagues stated that we are following policy I-40. It's not I-40, we are following policy I-44, and we are in phase one of the multi-year strategic plan. Second thing was this uh, steering committee uh, that was created was, uh, uh, was created uh, correctly. Uh, meetings were not unilaterally held. Uh, everyone was invited, but some chose not to, which is fine. Uh, but we had a wholesome discussion and a good discussion and we came up with some solutions. We also have a mandate from the Ministry on Equity Inclusion and all, all are directed to, all, all these requirements are directed to make our educational, uh, uh, this place, a place of excellence uh, while making each and every one of our students and staff feel welcome and included. So I don't think this is rocket science, Mr. Chair. It is something that we have to do. Besides, one of my colleagues did say that uh, this policy uh, was last uh, uh, looked at about 13 years, 15 years back. I think we really need to uh, refresh ourselves, Mr. Chair. And so those are my comments. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Vice Chair Duart. So uh, all trustees who wanted to speak uh, had their three minutes. The floor would be open for questions, but questions only. Uh, Mr. Chair, so I'm, I'm in line. Uh, I'm in line, Mr. Chair. Excuse me, I'm speaking. But uh, I just want to make sure. Trustee DeRosa, I am speaking. I'm well aware you're in you're in line. So is Mr. Trust Chair. Trustee DeRosa, please do not interrupt me again. I'm aware you're in line, Trustee O'Brien and Trustee Antomasi. All Thank three you. of you, you have spoken already. You no longer have your three minutes of debate. However, you are able to ask questions. That's what I was trying to impart to the group. So right now, the debate section is over. If you have a question, Trustee DeRosa, please ask your question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I didn't intend to use three minutes, and uh, certainly I'm going to ask a question. My question is to uh, 
Director Daly. The first meeting that took place of the committee, Director uh, Daly, uh, constituted quorum. That meeting was supposed to be, according to the act, a, a public meeting. Out of that meeting, there were decisions that were made. Um, the point was made that that meeting should have been a public meeting. Uh, we then subsequently ceded to schedule a second meeting, which again uh, was public, was supposed to be public, but we didn't advertise the address on the on the website. So uh, there was a very minimal attendance from the public. What, uh, what uh, resulted from that meeting is uh, a, a whole scale, a whole scale approval of what happened in the previous meeting. So essentially the two meetings that, the, that are uh, giving rise to this, uh, to this motion that we're supposed to entertain. Um, I've not been public for all intents and purposes and I have not had the benefit of uh, public scrutiny. With respect to the the actual um, uh, with respect to the actual poll that was taken, point of order, that, Mr. Was the, um, that was the point result. Of, point of, point of order. Leading well. to my question, Mr. Well, Chair. One this moment. One question. moment. We have a point of order. I appreciate all the all the trustees' help and support in my rulings, but I think I have I have this handled from here. Trustee Guzzo, what is your point of order? Um, this is a question. This I, I haven't heard a question, and it, he's entering into debate. So I would ask that chair, you rule that a question be asked, or that he heeds his chair to somebody else. Uh, I, your point of order is is taken, Trustee Derosa. Please uh, ask your question. I have a point uh, of privilege, Mr. Chair. Please, uh, Trustee O'Brien, what's your point of privilege? Point of privilege is I'm in the beginning of this meeting. You outlined that the chat box would be used for hand up and hand down. I've seen conversation there. Uh, I'm just finding it confusing to follow two conversations at the same time. So if you could please remind trustees to please use the chat box for hand up and hand down only. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, I'll rule on that point of privilege. Trustee O'Brien, we have never stated that the chat box is solely for hand up, hand down. We, if we want to make that uh, decision in the future we can, but um, at, at this point we have never made that uh, distinction. Uh, Trustee Court, DeRosa, please. I thought you said that at the beginning. My apologies. No problem. No problem at all. Pro, uh, Trustee DeRosa, please ask your question. I will. Um, and to whoever cares to answer it, um, I want to know whether the first two meetings were held uh, in accordance to the Act given that there was a quorum of trustees around the table and the act specifically has rules to that to that effect and exceptions to that effect so i want to know whether we followed the act according to for for the those two meetings held due to the fact that they were they constituted quorum thank you uh, understood director daly yeah before uh thank you to you mr chair trustee de rosa you're well aware based on the legal opinion both from a lawyer and from our parliamentarian, uh, that the first meeting should have been open to the public. It was not. Uh, the second meeting was open to the public. We tried to rectify what happened at the first meeting. Um, so other than getting it on the public statement, I, I don't think I've added anything uh, to your knowledge base there. Trustee O'Brien. May I have a follow up, Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, please state it as a question. Okay. Uh, Quite correctly, the the uh, link on the website, if I recall, uh, was uh, um, put into um, was published maybe a few hours before the actual meeting took place. Um, it's I'm sure it was a, an innocent oversight, but the effect had that effectively that meeting was was held in closed doors because it wasn't advertised properly. Point of order, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Guzzo, what's your point of order? Again, Trustee DeRose is entering into debate. This uh, isn't debatable. These questions have been answered. It, I mean, these, these comments have already come out. It, if there's a question, I would ask that a question be asked. Uh, yes, Trustee DeRosa, could you please ask your question? My question, and uh, I would remark, Mr. Chair, that the more I get interrupted, the more time it takes to ask the questions. So at what time did we publish the link on the website that day of the meeting? Director Daly? 
Yeah, the floor. Uh, thank you, and through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I don't know what time the the website link was published, Trustee DeRosa. I do know that we live streamed that meeting. I do know that the agenda was posted and the meeting in that sense was open to the public. Uh, thank you, Trustee yeah, O'Brien. Mr. Chair. Uh, Trustee uh, DeRosa, you had your two. I'll put you back in the queue after uh, Trustee Tomasi. Trustee O'Brien, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, I have this question directed to uh, Ms. Swinnon if she's here or, or someone from research. I'm looking at the actual uh, stakeholder feedback itself. 66% of the people that responded were parents, keeping in mind the fact that that's well, maybe 45% of our stakeholders are ratepayers. Question to Ms. Swindon, was anybody else emailed the survey besides parents? After uh, you, Mr. Chair, I'm here. Uh, please proceed, you have the floor. Yes, we um, we also emailed the survey to the the regular distribution list um, that we would send out for policy as well as students. This I believe this one went directly to students too. Okay, follow up question, Mr. Chair. Yes, please proceed. So the people who are ratepayers who do not have children in the system, were they emailed? Did you email them all? To you, Mr. Chair, we yes, do not have um, we do not have email distribution lists for anyone who is not connected to our system. So we have email distribution for our students, for our parents, for our staff. We do not have email distribution lists for of other stakeholders. So no. So what we did to to reach the parishes is what we've always done, which is we send the message directly to our Halton Deanery parishes and ask them to post on their website and or share in the bulletin. Trustee Antomasi, you have the floor. Um, thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'll go back to the establishment in the district meeting. Um, it's been, although we have two opinions, both the parliamentarian and the legal opinion, both opinions are devoid of the fact that committees only make recommendations. We, this particular committee, the steering committee, went out and saw- Sorry, point of order, Mr. Feedback. Chair. Is there a question here? Sounds like debate again. Can you, state your, can you state your point of order? Yes, Mr. Chair, thank you. Sounds like debate again, and I'm just wondering if there's a question here or if, we're, if this is debate. It sounds like uh, a lot like debate. Yes, it's thank you. Trust, debate, Trust, Trust Andamosi, yes, Trustee Andamosi, can you please ask your question? My question can only be asked if I give background. So I need to establish the protocols before I ask my question. So I've stated two protocols that have been missed. The third protocol is that we're required by the ministry under the Education Act, and we've all had the multi-year strategic planning guide that community partners are to be sitting at on the steering committee. We do not have any community partners. The community partners that I'm referring to and I want to know whether or not we've reached out to them would be people from Joseph Brandt Hospital, from Child Services, uh, from Halton Health. These are all partners that are part of the multi-year strategic plan because the multi-year strate strategic plan is all encompassing. So my question to Secretary Daly is, where are our community partners on the steering committee to make the decision to send this matter to the board that we're deliberating right now. Uh, Director Daly, you have the floor. Thank you, Andrew, Mr. Chair. Uh, so our strategic planning process um, policy does indicate that all trustees are members of the ad hoc steering committee and then uh, other staff as needed. In terms of consulting with other community partners, that would certainly come in the consultation phase of the plan. So we would ask for that input. We'd go for various types of stakeholder feedback once we determine what that process is that we're going to follow. In terms of reviewing the mission, vision, and values of the board, that can be done at any time. It could be done separate of the strategic planning process. 
Um, so do we intend to engage the wider community? Absolutely. We're just not there yet. And I would also add that in terms of committees making recommendations to the Board of Trustees, we have many committees that exist that make recommendations to the Board of Trustees, and then the Board of Trustees votes on those recommendations. Follow up, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, please proceed. So again, this question goes to Secretary Daly. The fact of the matter is that the Ministry of Education established in the multi-year strategic planning guide that the first step is to set up a steering committee which includes our community, our community partners. This is a joint effort. This is not an effort just by trustees. I want to know from him why these particular, our community partners were not included in the very first meeting of the steering ad hoc committee. That's a mandated requirement by the ministry. The director Daly, you have the floor. Well, I think if Trustee Antomas is referring to a guide, it's not mandated. Um, I would also say that we certainly will include a wider uh, representation of our community members as we once trustees decide on what that community consultation process will be. Trustee, you uh, didn't answer the question. My question is a very specific question. The ministry guidelines and the way this board is preceded with a multi-year strategic plan from the onset. This is going to be our third multi-year strategic plan. Community partners were invited from the onset when the steering committee was first struck, which is why this particular process has been skewed. It should have been started with the board establishing a multi-year strategic steering committee by including all of the community partners. That was not done. This is skewed, the multi-year strategic Wait plan. Order, and it's pillar. No, no, I'm trying to set up my question. So the, 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 the mission vision statement and the pillars of our multi-year strategic plan have to come from community partners, not just the trustees. Uh, Trustee Tomasi, I believe Director Daly answered your question that you were referring to a guide uh, and not uh, what our policy is. Uh, Trustee uh, DeRosa, you have the floor. The guide precedes our policy. Point of order. Trust, Trustee DeRosa, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, we're, we're being asked to, to approve the mission statement, which is probably the cornerstone of what this board will look like and will do in the next five years. It's a long-term decision. The changes recommended uh, by the, um, the meetings or the committees, call them what they will, they were behind closed doors. I've been recommended without um, fulsome participation of our uh, community as well as our community partners. So um, again, I, it feels like we're rushing order, Mr. the Chair? most important cornerstone Trustee, of our Trustee state. Agnew, what's your point of order? I'm sorry, again, this sounds like debate. What's Trustee DeRosa's question, Mr. Chair? Uh, Trustee DeRosa, could you please ask your question? You know, I'd like like Trustee Antomasi, I would like to set up the stage and the preamble to the question. So if uh, my colleagues would show a little bit of patience and stop interrupting, I'd take a lot less time, Mr. Chair. Point of order. Okay, okay. let's take a pause. Everybody is well aware that at this stage of the meeting, we're to ask questions, not enter into debate. So please be respectful and ask your question and then the, the meeting will proceed as it should. Trustee DeRosa, please ask your question. Director Daly, understanding the importance of the, of the mission statement to the overall strategic plan that we're about to develop and lay out for the next five years, would you not agree that it deserves at least a little bit more consideration and participation from our partners. 
That's Director, my question. Thank you. Director Daly, you have the floor. Um, thank you and through you, Mr. Chair. I guess I would say, Trustee DeRosa, that the over 2,000 responses that we got from um, our, our largely our parents, but from the group identified in the survey, which was done back in February, uh, we're now in May. Uh, this has been public information for quite a while. I don't think there's any anything hidden here. I don't think there's anything that people aren't aware. I would say that we got uh, a good sampling of feedback and I think that it gives um, trustees something uh, to either uh, approve or not approve. And that's ultimately up to our trustees here at the board. So may I have a follow up, Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, please proceed. So as it relates to the actual the actual uh, survey that was done um, and rather quickly, uh, I remember making the point at that first meeting that we cannot proceed without at least some degree of public consultation because that's where we were headed. But nonetheless, if I recall the results of this particular survey, they were clearly, clearly not indicative of, of taking one direction or, or the other. I don't know what 2,000, um, uh, a survey of 2,000 parents or 2,000 people in the community are actually representative of our, of our total of our total base. I think there has to be some statistical validation of that. I think we have to consider that the responses that we got back were not clear in uh, clearly decisive in one way or the other. And I think we should pause and reconsider because what we are changing is the cornerstone of what of order, Mr. our Chair. board is. Trustee Agnew, what's your point of order? What's the question that Trustee DeRosa has? I hear uh, uh, opinions. Thank debate. you. I'll rule on your point of order. Yes, I think Trustee, uh, Trustee uh, DeRosa, you, uh, that I'll was debate question. and not a question. So we'll, the floor will question. now move to Trustee Agnew. I wanted to ask my Thank question. Thank you and through you, Mr. Chair. I just have a question actually for communications or for uh, research, whoever might be available. I just wanted to um, uh, reiterate on what, or just uh, elaborate on what um, uh, Director Daly had said. And I'm just wondering about the survey that went out with respect to stakeholder feedback. I guess it wasn't a survey, but the, what went out for stakeholder feedback. Can we get some um, concrete idea around, again, how many people responded back to that and what that response rate looked like compared to other stakeholder feedbacks we've put out before? Uh, Ms. Swindon, you have the floor. Sure, thank you. Um, and through you, Mr. Chair, and I don't know if Dr. Collimore, I, I do think she's on and I, I am happy to defer to Dr. Collimore and I can also speak after. Good evening through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so with respect to um, the consultation form that was sent out, so I mean, I wouldn't use the term response rate in this case because this wasn't an actual survey, it was a public consultation. And so for my opinion and from my perspective, you know, our consultations are giving our stakeholders the opportunity to give their input or their feedback on a specific topic. Um, and typically our consultation forms are very open-ended. It's just one comment and it's open-ended. For this case, um, as Trustee Duarte said, um, we had original statements, we had revised statements, and we wanted to really know the preference of, of our stakeholders. And so the form was modified in this case. Um, in my opinion, I would say that consultations are more about the quality of the information that we receive rather than the quantity. And it's even more important that as trustees and as the steering committee, you know, you take the feedback that you receive, you listen to it, and you really engage in meaningful discussions so that you are ensuring that you're making a solid decision when the time comes. Um, so, you know, in my, in, from my perspective, do I think that over 2,000 responses and bits of information is a lot of input? Yeah, I do think that. Um, do, is it more than we typically get when we do consultations? Yeah, it is more than we typically get. Um, and as was mentioned by both trustees um, Agnew and Guzzo earlier, you know, we, you asked for the stakeholder consultation to go out. So now you have all of this information. Stakeholders have taken the time to answer and to give you that feedback. And so I think it's really a testament to the numbers. So people obviously have a lot to say on this topic and these statements, and it's important. And so just like you did in, in previous action items today, where you heard from others, like 
like the the school name and the other action items where where in consultation was received and accepted and considered i think it's important that you also give the same consideration to this to this consultation that happened um, so I hope that you will take the, con the, the feedback into consideration as you make your decision. And I really hope that answers some of your questions. Uh, it does. Thank I, you very much, Dr. Collymore. Thank you. Up next, no we problem. have Trustee, uh, thank, sorry. Up next, we have Trustee Guzzo. Thank you through you, Mr. Chair. My question through you, Mr. Chair, would be, I think, to Director Daly. Um, what happens if we can't get through this? Um, and the multi-year strategic plan doesn't actually get get passed as seeing that this one technically expires this year, the end of the school year. Uh, Director Daly. Uh, thank you and through you, Mr. Chair. Um, it, it's it's not um, it's not uncommon for boards to experience a little bit of lag potentially between one strategic plan to the next. Um, so. Uh, you know, going into next school year, I think the, you know, the overarching uh, kind of aims and priorities of the plan, we could continue on into the next school year. And certainly some boards that undertook the process, um, you know, late last year and then into this year, um, again, because of because of COVID, it did delay their, their kind of their, their final product. Um, but certainly we are mandated, uh, to develop a new plan. Thank you, uh, Director Daly. I have a follow up, Mr. Chair. Uh, please proceed. Um, with the past multi-year strategic plans, have we done anything different? And I don't know who, who would like to answer this, if it's uh, Dr. Collymore or if it's Ms. Swindon or Director Daly. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, is, you know, have we done anything different or is this similar to the process that we always follow for getting stakeholder feedback? Director Dan? Um, I, 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 can't, uh, I can't speak too much to the specifics of the last one, although I was a principal at the time, so I should probably be able to speak to some of the specifics. Um, but we did have a committee uh, established um, uh, in the last strategic planning cycle. Uh, we did uh, engage a consultant at various points to help out with the process. We did go out for uh, stakeholder feedback in the form of um, uh, kind of face-to-face -face feedback and did it in a number of ways. That's a little bit further down the road for us. Um, certainly our current policy is fairly prescriptive in terms of the composition of the steering committee. Um, so I, 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 th I think um, we're following a similar Path, but I think our current policy probably reflects the last strategic planning process in that the policy changed after the last process was completed. So I'm assuming that trustees and staff at the time looked at the previous process and said, maybe there's a few things we need to um, uh, tweak or, or improve upon. Uh, Ms. Swindon, you had your hand up. Did you want to add some context to the answer? Sure, thank you. And through you, Mr. Chair, I will, I, I, the director actually pretty well answered it. I will add that, so we did follow the, essentially the exact same process that we're following right now. Um, the only difference is that when they, the trustees at the time went to validate the mission, vision and values, we did it in the format, in the forum of the policy committee. Um, and they they did not send it up for a consultation. So they developed the, the values statement. They validated the, the existing mission at the time as well as the vision, but they entirely rewrote the value statement and they did not uh, send it up for, for consultation. That's the only difference I would say, Trustee Guzzo. Uh, thank you. So up next we have Trustee DeRosa, then Trustee O'Brien after Trustee O'Brien, uh, this debate will be closed and I will call a vote. I ask trustees to, um, to not take liberties. This is meant to be a question period. Please ask your questions. Trustee DeRosa, you have the floor. I think I've said what I have to say, Mr. Chair, I'll pass. Thank you. Trustee O'Brien, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, this is actually a parliamentary question. What do we, 
need to pass this tonight? A majority, two thirds? Um, if I can get that question answered by either yourself or a parliamentarian, please. Uh, so it would be, uh, it, it, all we're doing is taking the motion as you see it, the resolution as you see it, and we're breaking it down and being more specific in voting to its individual parts. So it would be a simple majority, but we can also ask uh, Parliamentary Kapoor for his advice on that, or his opinion, sorry. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I agree, you are correct. Uh, according to uh, policy I-44 on the strategic planning process, uh, this step uh, requires a decision through board resolution. Resolution is the same as motion, and a motion requires a majority vote. Okay. Uh, thank you. Trustee O'Brien, did you have a follow-up? Yeah, I guess follow-up question. Uh, just a clarification to uh, Ms. Swin Ms. Swin so last time they did this, it was finally voted on in policy. Just to get clarification on that. Sorry, it was, uh, um, and through you, Mr. Chair, it was developed in policy committee, then it went to the board for approval, but it was developed at policy level. Thank you, through Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make an amendment. Uh, please state your amendment. I move that this motion be brought to policy um, to be developed further. Uh, so to clarify, maybe uh, Parliamentary Kapoor can help me with this. So, so you are um, referring, your motion is to refer this to policy. Is that correct? Is it, Parliamentary okay. Kapoor, would that be a correct verbiage? Um, it would be a correct verbiage. It, um, it is not, you may consider that this is not in compliance with policy I-44, uh, in which case it would re require a three quarters vote according to policy one. Okay, so um, so so the motion to refer to policy uh, would not be in order because it contravenes policy I-44, is that correct? Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's something that consider chair it, policy i-44 outlines the process that this is to be determined by board resolution um um you you're 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 always uh, you're always uh, challenging me on how to fit your bylaws and your uh, policies uh, and read them uh, in harmony uh, board, i i i i i actually uh, chair I'm, as i'm giving it more thought a resolution could be referred, uh, okay. and that and that and so I would say I would advise you, Chair, that a chair that a that a, res, a board resolution could be referred. Uh, okay. In that case, it would be a standard uh, motion to refer, as per your bylaws, requires second and a majority. So I would okay. like to move. I apologize that. for any confusion, Chair. No problem. Like move that we um, refer this to policy. So the amendment is to refer to policy. Do we have a seconder? I will second. Seconded by Trustee DeRosa. Uh, Trustee O'Brien, you have, uh, you can open debate. Thank you, through Mr. Chair. If pa past practice had this in policy um, as a past practice, just to honor that past practice, it seems to me that it needs to be reworked more fulsome discussion, we're not in agreement to go forward on the most important thing we do without bringing it, um, without maybe more consensus or at least some agreement. I know in policy, we could come to a fuller agreement. I'm already seeing myself um, um, on one of the issues, definitely seeing it more clearly. I just feel we would feel better about moving forward if we brought the policy and just had a bit more discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, Director Daly has his hand up. Then we have uh, Trustee Guzzo. Um, just to, and I believe I'm correct here, but I'll, I'll, I'll stand corrected. Um, I believe the last time around we dealt with it in policy because we didn't have a strategic plan policy. Uh, we do have one now, and the policy committee at the time would have been 
like the steering committee it would have been the a committee of the whole but i i might i might have that wrong uh, thank you trustee guzzo you have the floor thank you through you mr chair I, i'm having a hard time understanding why we would refer uh, what we've already discussed at a committee of the whole that's been recommended to be brought to the board and now recommending it to be brought back to another committee of the whole but just a different title uh meeting policy we were obliged to follow the policy committee the policy agenda is already like it, it can only go on as an information item no action item can be done until the further until later on so again i i feel like we're just delaying and and going around in circles here um and we're following what stakeholders had asked and there was majority votes at the multi-year strategic plan committee and then and that was recommended by majority to bring it here to vote on so I, again i'm having a hard time understanding why we're referring it back to another a committee of the whole when it's already done that thank you uh, thank you trust, there was, trust uh, mr chair sorry, sorry there was no question uh, asked okay. there it was just opinion uh, and you have closing you can close the debate, uh, Trustee uh, O'Brien. Trustee DeRosa, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like I would like to make the point that the process of the last two meetings was not a proper process, and uh, referring back to to the policy, to the policy would actually give us um, an opportunity to start a proper process that is public and fully um, fully transparent. The other two meetings were not. And considering the importance of this, of, uh, of what we're doing here in, uh, in terms of reviewing our mission statement, uh, we need to give it the time because whatever we decide will be with us for a long time. So a referral, a referral to uh, the policy committee uh, to give it some more fulsome consideration it would be the proper thing to do and the wise thing to do rather than take a rush decision tonight thank you uh, thank you trustee agnew you're up next uh thank you three mr chair i just want some clarity and i i don't know again this is back to director daly's point uh or maybe uh, andrea or somebody who was around at the time can clarify um, but um, I just want to understand again what the um, what the process was previously and why it was done that way and why we're not needing to do that this time. So if I can just get some clarity around that again, just to jump off of Director Daly's point, I think that's getting lost. So I, I don't know if again if if Andrea was around at that time, if perhaps she could answer. Uh, Director Daly would like to to start, and then Ms. Swindon can can jump in. Thank you. And it, sorry, um, and I, I don't know if I'll be able to fully fully answer your question, Trustee Agnew. But I believe uh, I don't believe we had a strategic planning policy in place around the last strat plan. I think we probably followed uh, the guide that was provided by the ministry. Um, but but again, I, I might have to refer to, to somebody that was around the table at the time. Uh, Ms. Swindon, you have the floor. Thank you through you, Mr. Chair. And Director Daly is correct. We did not have a policy at the time. That policy was actually developed in December of 2017. And we, we uh, the trustees actually developed the last strategic plan in 2016. So because we did not have a policy, as the director mentioned, we did follow the guidelines of the ministry and, and the trustees worked on the mission, vision and values during policy because that was, it was almost like a working committee of the whole. Um, so it, essentially what, what this group of trustees have done in the strategic planning committee, which has already been struck according to, and again, you're following this policy to, I-44, it's quite prescriptive um, and, and you've, you've been following it to to um, to to the to the last degree. So I think that is why um, that's why they did it in policy at the time, because there was just no other forum. And then they took it to the board for approval and and everything you've done up until now is on track following the policy you've cr created. You've 
you re actually even done more than the policy prescribes, which is send out for, for stakeholder consultation at this stage of mission, vision, and values validation. Hope that helps. Yes, it does. Uh, it, thank, yes, thank, thank you very much. Uh, Trustee Intamasi, you have the floor. Okay, uh, I had asked, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I had asked for a point of order because the motion as stated by Trustee O'Brien is incorrect and it's not valid. Um, what should be happening here, this is not a simple motion. This is a motion that's backed by the mission statement and reviewing the, the pillars of the multi-year strategic plan. That in itself is the same as a policy. It's, it has to have three readings. This has only had one reading and now we're combining two readings to approve the new pillars. It requires two thirds majority to be approved. It's in our governance document policy number one. It's stipulated there. Uh, thank you for your opinion, Trustee Tomasi. If there's no other uh, questions, we'll have Trustee O'Brien to close debate. Thank you, three, Mr. Chair. Tonight, I'm being asked to vote on four amendments to the long year, a multi year strategic plan. Um, the survey feedback is excellent, excellent. The comments are good. Insofar as it targets one population, that is of our parents. I clearly understand where they are, clearly, and, and it's great feedback. What I'm concerned about is the other 55% of our, our stakeholders. And tonight I have no idea, no sense at all. Those 50, I mean, we have about 100,000 ratepayers. The 55,000 or so ratepayers that have voted us in, I have no idea how they feel about these changes. And I just can't move forward based on what I've been given. And I feel at least with regard to policy, maybe we can develop, develop some way of reaching out to them a little bit better. Because um, once we vote, there's no turning back. And I just not confident that I even know what my all my ratepayers feel. So that is the reason why I'm bringing the policy. So Mr. Chair, if you'll take it to the vote, please. Uh, will do, thank you. So uh, we'll move to a recorded vote. Um, Trustee Duarte. Opposed to moving to policy. Opposed. Trustee Guzzo. Opposed. Trustee Intamasi. Favor. Trustee Caravella. In favor. Trustee O'Brien. In favor. Trustee O'Hearn Trunata. Opposed. Trustee Gubert. Abstain. Trustee Kelly. Opposed. Trustee Roshti. Opposed. Trustee Agnew. Opposed. Trustee DeRosa. In favor. And uh, Trustee Murphy is opposed. The motion fails. We are going back to the main motion, uh, which we will, which I'll call a recorded vote on. So. Uh, Parliamentary Kapoor, maybe you can help us through uh, the wording on our vote. So the first would be to accept the mission statement. So we would need to see what the proposed mission statement is, I'm assuming, if we can, I don't know, Rosie, if you can get to that. So the motion basically stated that we adopt the um, stakeholder feedback per Mission, Chair. vision, and value. Chair, I have uh, uh, emailed just a, a, a few moments ago some suggested wordings to uh, to Rosie. Okay. Uh, but uh, you could, and I've used all the language in the current motion. However, the the core of the motion is that uh, the board adopt the revised mission statement. However, I I did add in the wording I sent her the the rationale that's recorded in the current motion. I can read it if you wish and you see. Yeah, if, yeah, if you if you could. Sure. And then if you give Rosie some time to put it up. Sure. Uh, resolved 
that the Halton Catholic District School Board accept the recommendation of the multi-year strategic planning committee that based on stakeholder feedback that the board accept results and adopt the revised HCDSB mission statement as in agenda item 8.6. And then we would go through each um, other statement in the similar fashion. There's another one, uh, almost exact okay. same wording for the vision statement. Uh, the value statement, there are two changes and I've got different wording for each one given the results of the feedback. Okay. So if, uh, Rosie, is it, do you have that file? If you can put up the first uh, statement would be ideal. Uh, Trustee Guzzo, do you have your hand up? Oh, no problem. Just give us a moment and we'll have uh, the first uh, statement up, the mission statement to, to vote on. Uh, Trustee Tomasi, you have a point of order. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as I said previously, and please ask Parliamentarian uh, Kapoor to weigh in. This particular, this is not a motion. The motion is accepting a document that has only ever been vetted once. All our documents of what we accept as a board required to be read three times. This is receiving only two readings. If we want to combine the second and third reading this evening by accepting the document, it requires two thirds majority. Uh, thank you, Trustee and Damasi for your, um, your point of order. Um, we've stated several times during this meeting that this is not a policy, it's a resolution that we're voting on. Uh, it's it's parliamentary Trustee and Tomasi. Trustee and Tomasi, there is no debate. There is right. no debate. You're out, you out of order. You are out of order. Out of order. You're out of order. There is no debate on the chair's ruling. Uh, if you would like me to ask Parliamentarian Kapoor for his opinion, yes, I can please. do Parliamentarian Kapoor, can you uh, comment? Thank you, Chair. Sorry, I was having a bit of difficulty unmuting myself. Um, I would advise you that uh, Trustee Antomasi's point is not well taken. Um, strategic policy, uh, sorry, policy I-44, that uh, strategic planning process uh, lists seven different steps that need to come before come to the board as part of the strategic planning process. Uh, this is step two, review, validate, and update mission, vision, values. Uh, and further, the uh, I-44 says that these are decisions made through board resolution. In your bylaws, the terms, and in Robert's rules, the terms resolution and motion are synonymous. And in your bylaws, voting on motions is by a majority vote. Therefore, uh, my advice to you is that uh, his point is not well taken and that policy one, which is he is referring to, does not apply here. Uh, thank you. So trustees, I'm calling the vote on the resolution as you see it in front of you. Um, is there uh, is there more to that, Rosie? Or we can scroll. Is that the, uh, that's the first one, okay. Now, do as a point of clarification, do trustees need to see the wording of the mission statement that is being proposed? Yes, um, please. I would say that would be a good idea. <laughs> okay, so uh, well, if we can, uh, sorry, Rosie, I'm making your life difficulty difficult. Andrea, maybe uh, Miss Swindon, maybe if you can do that, is um, is flip back to. Uh, the actual wording of the mission statement. Let me get that face off the screen. You nobody needs to see that. Uh, so this is the mission statement as 
uh, preferred by stakeholders. So I'll give you a moment to read it, and this is what we will be voting on to approve. Mr. Chair, can I request that the graph be put there? Uh, chart. We, yes, once, so once people are comfortable and have read this, then we can uh, cut back to the stakeholder uh, pie chart. Are we able to show the uh, the pie chart? Uh, Ms. Swin, if you could switch now would be would be good. Uh, so sixty sixty six percent voted for the revised statement as was shown. So now we can switch back. Sorry, I'm, I'm making uh, your life very challenging, everybody. Sorry, we can switch back to the wording of the resolution. And I'll call the vote. So we're now calling, I'm now calling a vote on the, uh, the resolution as in front of you. Uh, Trustee Guzzo. In favor. Trustee Damasi. Against. Trustee Carabella. Opposed. Trustee O'Brien. In favor. Trustee O'Hearn Ternata. In favor. Trustee Goober. Opposed. Trustee Kelly. In favor, Mr. Chair. Trustee Roshti. Abstaining. Trustee Agnew. In favor. Trustee DeRosa. I'm opposed. The Vice Chair Dewar. In favor. And Trustee Murphy is in favor. Submission statement carries. Moving on to our vision statement. So if we could go through the same process. So we have we have 66% of the stakeholders approving the revised statement. Is it possible to uh, to make the revised statement a bit bigger? Okay, so I'll give trustees a moment to read the revised statement. That is what we would be voting to accept. Mr. Chair, can I make a uh, point of clarification? Uh, what's your point of clarification, uh, Trustee DeRosa? I'd like to make the distinction that when you refer to 66% uh, of the people, 66% uh, results is of the people polled. Okay, I'll make sure that I make that distinction next time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can we go to, now can we go to the resolution? Okay, so we're going to be voting on this resolution uh, to accept the, uh, the vision statement. Uh, Trustee Tomasi, how do you vote? Against. Trustee Carabella? I'm opposed. Trustee O'Brien? Opposed. Trustee O'Hearn Zernata? In favor. Trustee Goober? Opposed. Trustee Kelly? In favor. Trustee Roshti? Opposed. 
Trustee Agnew? In favor. Trustee DeRosa? I'm opposed. Vice Chair Dewar? In favor. Uh, Trustee Guzzo? In favor. And Trustee Murphy's in favor. The vision statement carries. Uh, if we can go to the value statement. Perhaps a word of explanation, Chair? Yes, please. Um, there are two uh, changes that went out for stakeholder feedback in the value in the set of values. Uh, one, and they both had uh, different uh, levels of support from shareholder stakeholder feedback. Um, I placed number five first because it had a, uh, the stakeholder feedback was in favor of the revision. And I've used, and then for values number one revision, I've used different wording to reflect the fact that the stakeholder feedback was uh, opposed. And you'll see the wording is different. And although it's in a, maybe if we if we can deal with five first, uh, maybe I'll uh, I may have to explain the wording of one a little more as well. Okay, so the the uh, people of the people who voted, the majority accepted the insertion of the word celebrate. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, did you want to comment, uh, uh, Parliamentarian Kapoor? This is on um, this is on uh, the value uh, value statement number five, and so it's the it, it, the language and the uh, logic behind it is the same as what we've just did for the mission and vision statements. It's the uh, it's the next one that is uh, a little bit different. And we're voting on these individually, or we're voting on at the same time. Uh, my. Uh, Based on my understanding of the committee recommendation, I'd uh, suggest that you vote on these uh, separately. Okay. And should we vote on number five first, or say that's an easier, easier vote? Uh, easier is a relative term. Uh, it's just that the uh, logic on number five and the wording matches what's in the, already in the vi mission okay. and vision. Okay. So if we can, uh, so. Trustees can see that the change is to accept the word celebrate inserted. And then if we can move to the uh, resolution. Regardless. So we're uh, calling a vote on the resolution uh, as you see it. Uh, sorry, Vice Chair uh, Duart, you have a question? I have my hand up, Mr. Chair. Uh, just an uh, observation here, and to me, it's, I'm struggling with this. The uh, results from the survey is 50% plus or minus 3, which is kind of uh, very divisive in nature. It's kind of 53% for revise and 47% for uh, keeping it original. So I'm struggling with this. Uh, I like the word respect, diversity, celebrate multiculturalism, multiculturalism, which resonates with me. So. Uh, I'm still but, but we're beyond debate. This is this is we're calling the vote. So, okay. uh, Trustee O'Brien, I see your hand is up. Though I agree with Trustee Dwart, I will not debate. Okay. I, so we're I, we're voting. Can I have a point of privilege just for uh, the? Yeah. I think you're just going to explain what we're voting. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we're we're voting on the value statement number five, which. Um, was the insertion of the word celebrate in the in the value statement. Trustee Carabella, we'll, we'll start with you. Sorry, thank you. Point of, sorry, just sorry, Mr. Chair, just point of privilege for a moment. I just want to make sure everyone has their um, mics off because I could hear a lot of whispering in the background. Just want to make okay. sure we don't miss anything. Thank you. Under understood. Please turn your mics off. 
Uh, Trustee Carabello, how do you vote? And so I, just a clarification as well. So if I'm opposed to this, then it reverts back to the original statement if it. Correct. Correct. Okay, so I'm, I'm opposed. Okay, Trustee O'Brien. Opposed. Trustee O'Hearn Trinata. I'm in favor. Trustee Goober. I'm opposed. Trustee Kelly. In favor. Trustee Roshti. Opposed. Trustee Agnew. In favor. Trustee DeRosa. I'm opposed, Mr. Chair. Vice Chair Duart. I'm opposed. Trustee Guzzo. In favor. Trustee Intamasi. Opposed. And uh, Trustee Murphy's in favor, so the motion doesn't carry. It was five four opposed. Moving on to vi to values number one statement. Uh, so. we have is the um, uh, majority of the people voted wanted the original is that correct I, I lost the scale okay so what we are what you're voting for in favor is to keep the original is that correct that's correct interpretation uh, parliamentarian no, more? that's that's where I that's where I had a bit of I heard your disapproval sir. your disapproving tick. <laughs> So. Sorry, <clears throat> that's where I had a bit of uh, uh, motions. Uh, our Roberts uh, 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 wants wishes motions to be uh, worded in the affirmative. Okay. So um, you'll notice the wording of this motion is different. It does not include the reflecting sh stakeholder feedback part, because the motion that I've put be that uh, is. Uh, that I've proposed that you put that you consider is to adopt the revised wording. Okay, despite, so if you, despite the stakeholder feedback. Okay, so if, if you vote to uh, to adopt the revised wording, you're voting against the stakeholder. That sorry, the majority who voted opinion. Correct. Okay, if you so, if you vote opposed, you're voting to keep the original language. Okay, which is in keeping with the majority who voted. Correct. Okay, does any do does do any trustees need further clarification on that? Yes, yes. please. One more yes. time. Okay. Yes, so so uh, I I'm not going to muddy the waters. I'll let uh, parliamentarian Kapoor uh, explain Let's that again. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the the motion is worded that you uh, adopt the revised wording. The stakeholder feedback suggests that you vote against this motion that's in front of you, in which case uh, voting against the motion in front of you preserves the original wording, which the stakeholder feedback uh, suggests that you do. So. It seems counterintuitive and I apologize, but uh, there's no non-confusing way of doing this. The, if you are supporting these, if you're going to vote in line with the stakeholder feedback, as you see on the screen, you vote no. Is that, uh, is that clear? Uh, I'm assuming since there's no response, that is clear. So Trustee O'Brien, how do you vote? I vote in favor. Okay. Uh, Trustee O'Hearn Chernata. I'm opposed. Trustee Goober. I'm in favor. Trustee Kelly. Uh, opposed. Trustee Roshti. I'm in favor, sir, Mr. Chair. Uh, Trustee Agnew. Opposed. Trustee DeRosa. I'm in favor. Trustee uh, Vice Chair Duart? Opposed. Trustee Guzzo? Opposed. Trustee Intamasi? In favor. 
Trustee Caravella. In favor. Uh, Trustee Murphy's opposed, so the motion fails. Uh, we are we have completed the action item, which concludes uh, our meeting since we did not vote to extend. Uh, closing prayer, Trustee Agnew. Just give me one moment here. Uh, thank you. Uh, the sign of our faith, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear God, we pray for all those in our world suffering from racism, sexism, and religious discrimination, for the individuals who are silenced for expressing their beliefs, for the people who feel marginalized within society. Please help them remain positive despite physical and psychological strife. Help them to forgive those who persecute them or who fail to treat them with respect. Forgive us, Lord, if we are consciously or unconsciously share in the conditions or in a system that perpetuates injustice. Please enlighten all of your disciples that discrimination does not only come in the form of lowering others, but it demonstrates itself in the process of granting of privileges to select groups of people as well. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Uh, good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.